It's the New York Yankees against the Kansas City Royals. Ed Figueroa against Dennis Leonard. Game five of the American League Championship Series. from Yankee Stadium in New York City. The final game of the American League Championship Series. The Kansas City Royals against the New York Yankees. Starting in left field for the New York Yankees tonight, number six, Roy White, as we set the Yankee defense for the top of the first inning. In center field for New York, the flyer, Mickey Rivers. Over in right field, the left-hander, Oscar Gamble, number 23. At third base, the American League home run champion, number nine, Greg Nettles. At shortstop, number 11, Fred Stanley, who's been outstanding in this championship series. At second base for the New York Yankees, number 30, Willie Randolph. At first base for the Yankees, power hitter Chris Chambliss. Catching tonight for New York will be Thurman Munson, Number 15, and doing the pitching, right-hander Ed Figueroa, who was the loser in Sunday's ball game but had a fine season, 19 and 10. Keith Jackson, along with Howard Cosell and Reggie Jackson, and don't you love it when it gets down to the nubs? Everything is up for grabs tonight as Al Cowan steps in for Kansas City to lead off. He'll be followed by Tom Poquette and George Brett and John Mayberry would be the fourth hitter if someone should get on. The temperature heading toward the middle 50s tonight in New York City, and here is the first pitch of the final game for the American League pennant. If the Yankees win tonight, it'll be the 30th pennant for New York. If Kansas City wins, it'll be the first ever for a ball club that is just finishing its eighth season. the strike zone on the outside corner and low with his second pitch. The first pitch was high and away. The second pitch was really a hummer on the outside corner. Collins Jackson takes this one a little low. They ask as to whether or not he tipped the ball. Thurman Munson obviously indicating that he thinks that he did. The plate umpire for tonight's game is the veteran Art Prince. The stadium is capacity at better than 58,000. Standing room only, Keith. Place is excited. We're hot. This is it. By the way, I thought I heard a tick. <laughs> Two and one. Tap high in the air to the right side. Big bounce for Randolph. Snaps the throw got him. The first base umpire tonight is Larry McCoy. Joe Brinkman is at second. Larry Barnett at third. Now the right field line, Bill Haller. The left field line, it's George Maloney. The batter now for the Kansas City Royals. Number two man in the order, Tom Poquette. Well, we're off with a bang tonight. A guy can make a big, big name for himself tonight. Everything is magnified. Everything under a microscope tonight. You hit a home run tonight, it'll for sure be heard around the country. Tom Poquette at 231 on the series. Hitting left-handed, pulls it sharply foul. On the right side, it's out of play. Figueroa's whole job tonight, Keith, as you know, to keep the ball down. He was high in his last outing. And we have seen this Kansas City ball club that is very quick to jump on the pitches that are high. And today is Ed's 28th birthday. He wanted desperately to be the first Puerto Rican pitcher to win 20 games in a season that's fouled away. And the count is two strikes. Juan Pizarro from Puerto Rico won 19 one year. Ed 
that Figueroa finished this season with the Yankees at 19 and 10. I think that if he wins this ball game, it'll sure overcome the disappointment for him of <laughs> yeah. winning 20 you better games. Believe. I would think so. Did two shots at it against Boston and Baltimore failed. Had a third shot coming up. Final day of the season, rained out. The outfield swings a little to the right for Poquette, and the fastball is a little bit high and away. And George Brett, who hit 333 to win the American League batting championship, is waiting in the on deck circle. And he has done very well against Ed Figueroa in his career. 1-2 pitch. Foul. It holds at 1-2. There was a sprinkle of rain across the city late this afternoon, but it's blown away. The wind has been up and down, but doesn't seem to be a particular factor at this point. The flag for just a moment comes up, but most of the evening it's been hanging rather limply. 1-2 pitch. You say there was a time when the on-deck hitter had a pretty good series against him or a pretty good time against Figueroa. He got 13 straight hits at one point. The pitch is high. 54 degrees at 8.30 tonight. The wind gusting 15.20 out of the northwest. The configuration, however, of the newly redesigned Yankee Stadium, I think, has changed the wind pattern somewhat. Two and two to Poquette. Foul back here. This little guy's been a tough out the whole series. He's almost played a lot better than people have expected. But what, what do you expect from a guy? He's hit 300 all year, and he's doing a little bit better than that right this series. It's been a pleasant, pleasant surprise for, I'm sure, all the people around the country. Not a surprise for the Kansas City Royals because they know what he can do. 2-2 two, two pitch to Poquette. He struck him out on a low inside pitch. That is the kind of pitch Figueroa will have to achieve all night. Keep the ball down. I think you can tell, too, that Figueroa's adrenaline is flowing a little bit because here in the top of the first inning of the ball game, he has been timed on our jugs radar gun at roughly 92 miles an hour on the fastball. There's no question about it, what you said, Howard. He's got to make good pitches tonight. He's had some rough times over the last couple of weeks of the season. Obviously had a rough time Sunday. He needs to come back with a good outing tonight for the obvious reason of winning the pennant, taking it all. Got to make good pitches tonight. The pitch to George Brett. Ball one. George Brett against Figueroa in 1976. Three for nine. But over the season, six, six, six. Fouled away. And as Reggie suggested, he went 12 out of 14. There's Whitey Herzog. Face apparently quizzical on the surface, but a man who's deeply tense tonight you better believe as is billy martin no there he is no difference between good work chet 40. one one pitch no it's two and one to brett it just has to be that figueroa early in the ball game will try to be very careful with brett who has been a successful foe it has been the pattern in the series for kansas city to jump on top as of the second game on sunday wow chip off the mask of Thurman Munson. There's no question about it. We've said it before and we can say it again, I guess. You can watch throughout the evening as ABC has coined the phrase, the thrill of agony, the thrill of, <laughs> the thrill of victory, the agony of defeat. We'll see it all here tonight. You'll see him working very, very cautious. You can't say how much he's riding on the ball game. You can't say a guy takes too much time or is being too fidgety or being too cautious because we've got it all going for us tonight. Two and two pitch to Brett. Outside. I think Reg is a little tight. Calm down. You hey, ain't playing. I feel like I'm playing a ball game, huh? <laughs> oh, you like, got to like it when it gets down to the last one, though. Here's where you have your most fun. Here's where the extraordinary becomes ordinary. The pitch, pulled to right field. Base hit for George Brett. And he continues to wear out Figueroa. It's off the wall, and Brett goes into second standing with a double. He really owns it got that right. They might be related. I know that he's from Puerto Rico and George Brett's from California, but the way he hits it, he just might own it. All right, Brett perched at second base, and the batter now is Big John Mayberry, the Kansas City first baseman, who is struggling in the closing hours of this 1976 season. Two for 14, and one run batted in in the championship series, hitting 143. 
This is your guy, Keith. You know what he can do. He can rip a ball game open. High pop left side. It may carry beyond the playing surface, and it does. It's a souvenir. He's not had a heck of a lot of success against Figaro. He's two for 19 against Figaro in his career for an average of 105 and has never, never, never homered off of him. However, he's got a flair for the dramatic. It's three times this year he knocked in five runs. In fact, one of them was against us in Baltimore. He just missed a grand slam yesterday by about four feet down the right field line. George Brett is off second base. As we look in from center field, and the pitch is high and away. You can see again, they're staying away from him. He really doesn't have to make give Mayberry a good ball to hit. He has first base open and a right-handed hitter on deck. So he doesn't have to come with anything too juicy, and I'm sure that he won't if he doesn't have to. High uh -oh. shot hit deep to right. May go way up and it's two to nothing. Gone. Here we have a perfect situation, a perfect example of that right field fence. He hung a curveball to John Mayberry. He got it up in the air, and normally for any other ballpark in the major leagues except maybe Detroit that ball is not a home run this is why you have to be so cautious maybe he should not have pitched to him in this situation he shouldn't have given a pitch to hit maybe they should have intentionally given him a walk and put him on first base and pitched to the right handed hitter with the big left field here that's He's the first home run since August 14th right. for Mayberry that's exactly right and the guy who's now on the spot in the minds of every baseball fan in this country is Billy Martin, because the whole question was, should he start Figueroa, who has never had success against Kansas City? We're at one and one, Keith. On Harold McRae, who is playing right field tonight, McRae broke out of his slump in the series yesterday with a double and a triple. So the two big men in the Kansas City order now are showing some power as McRae fouls it back to make the count one and two. It is so important for Kansas City to have their big man, Mayberry, get the long ball. You nope. just cannot measure the impact of it. You can't. It's tough to reiterate. He makes the pitcher pitch differently to everyone in the lineup. Swing and a miss by Hal McRae on a curveball, but Ed Figueroa is damaged as Brett doubles, Mayberry homers, and Kansas City gets a 2-0 lead in the top of the... ...the mound, hard-throwing Dennis Leonard. Leonard on the year, 17 and 11. He was not, however, successful in his outing against the Yankees in his first start in the championship series. Kansas City, to uh, back up the note uh, we made earlier, in game number two, they scored twice in the first inning. Game number three, they scored three times in the first inning. Game number four, they struck for three runs in the second inning, and tonight they have two in the first. So it does not always indicate victory for them, obviously, because we come to this final game all even at two and two. Leading off for the New York Yankees, it is Mickey Rivers at the top of the order, the center fielder. Batting second, it is Roy White. And then Thurman Munson will hit third with Chris Chambliss cleaning up. I think we should make note of the fact that Mickey Rivers, what we both feel, Keith, along with Howard, is the is the catalyst to this ball club offensively and has not been on base that much. He's only four for 18. All right, Reggie Jackson, the pitch is fouled away into the upper deck by Nick Rivers for strike one as Dennis Leonard got the ball where he needs to keep it when he's throwing the fastball. That's outside for this youngster. But Mickey can pull it. There's the breaking pitch. Now, this is the secret for Dennis Leonard. The pitching coach for the Kansas City Royals told me before the ball game, Galen Sisko, that Dennis has to get the breaking pitch over, otherwise he'll be gone. Ball is hit to left, Poquette on the move. Turns, goes He's back, in trouble. can't get it. Look the wrong way at the last moment, it's off the wall. Rivers going for three. He's He's got him going. Poquette was in trouble immediately. He knew the ball was going much deeper than he expected. He turned the wrong way. Let's look at it again. There's a breaking ball on the outside part of the plate. Rivers hits the ball a lot further than can be anticipated. Not a power hitter. There you see it way out there by the 387-foot mark. Poquette does the best job he possibly can. Ball hit over his head, and he just can't get to it. Rivers can fly, and there you see the stand-up triple. Keith? 
And immediately Paul Splithoff gets up in the Kansas City bullpen, the left-hander who is known as a Yankee killer. And he was so effective for them on Sunday night. You're looking at Roy White, a switch hitter, and the left fielder. He hits it on the ground. Contact backhand goes to first on the mound. said before we'll say it again it means this much Dickie Rivers the catalyst the offensive catalyst of that Yankee ball club the infield was back there you see the fastball white making contact they've almost given the New York Yankees a run right here as you see the infield is back just trying to get an out the play hit the pot text right he tries to make the big long throw White runs pretty well. Give Mayberry an assist. Give him a little credit for keeping that ball from going into the right field seat. Well, Mayberry, who can sometimes nonchalant it, is as good as any first baseman in scooping out the low ball. Pontek played it perfectly, but White, a swift-footed, left-handed hitter, got down quickly. Now let's take a look in isolation on Mickey Rivers running home on the play. As Reggie told you, the infield was playing back, giving up a run with a two-run lead, and that's pro forma. There's Ricky, uh, Mickey looking back and scoring the first tally for the Yankees. So we got a 2-1 ball game, man on first, bottom of the first, nobody out yet. Mayberry having homed with one on in case you've just joined us in the first inning. Brett had doubled with two out. Paul Splitoff is in the bullpen getting ready in a hurry. Dennis Leonard has had the conference with Whitey Herzog and his catcher, Buck Martinez. And the big worry about uh, Dennis Leonard is, as Reggie noted earlier, he's an emotional person. Very much so, Keith. He's an emotional kind of a guy. He said he was going to go out and just give it all he had. In fact, they knew he was an emotional guy. Consequently, he didn't know he was pitching until he came to the ballpark today. They didn't want to let him sleep on it because he probably wouldn't have been able to sleep on it. Thurman Munson, Keith. A 389 hitter. The Yankees have 12 doubles in this series in four games. Two to one. Kansas City as they throw to first to keep Roy White close. Both teams down with two base hits. Nobody out for New York. Run home and White on first. Stop play, balloon on field. <laughs> Let's become rule of thumb here at Yankee Stadium. The Yankees with an electrically excited group of fans all year long. Standing room only house tonight. We may be over 58,000 feet. The best ball is low. The Thurman Munson for ball one. He's going to go right at him, as you see. I'm sure that they went out and had a conference in the mound and told him, just settle down and relax. As we stated before, and we'll say it again and again, because we feel it's important. It is important. He's an emotional guy. Got great ability, great talent. Let's keep it in control. I'm sure that's what they said to him. Why it goes Roy White. Munson swings and misses. Martinez throws. Roy White got a perfect jump on the ball. It was no contest. Martinez never had a chance. There's a big jump. It's a good jump. He takes his glance like he's supposed to. See Patek with the excellent position. Again, no chance. Don't even bother to make a tag. Lee Buck Martinez had a little trouble finding the handle on that ball, Keith. Yep. Still nobody out for New York. Bottom of the first inning. A two-to-one ball game. And right up the turn with Munson up one and one. Now we've got no outs. And I'm sure that Thurman, if he's going to get a base hit, will try to get it to right field. So if he does, does not get a hit, he'll advance the runner by hitting the ball to the right side of the infield. There you see him try. Swing late and try to advance that runner. That's the name of the game. Get that man over there with one out or less than two outs. You have the opportunity to score him with an error, a ground ball, or a fly ball. One and two count now on the Yankee catcher as Dennis Leonard trying to weather a first inning storm. Split off is active in the Kansas City bullpen. settles in. One and two. Billy Martin standing in the Yankee dugout. Popped up right side foul. You looked at Billy Martin. The face is tense. Why not? It's the biggest thing in his life. And it should be. And you will see next inning. 
moment, there's a sign of faltering further by Figueroa. Martin will have his bullpen working and have Figueroa out. Center fielder Al Collins playing Munson toward right center, giving him left center. Figures, in fact, knows he's trying to hit it. But instead, he goes to the hole and pulls it to left. Base hit. Here comes Roy White, holding at third as the throw is cut off by Mayberry. Now the throw in. Munson goes to second. Now that, uh, that's intelligent base running. We pointed out yesterday that Munson, while not the swiftest man in the world, is relatively good fleet for a catcher. Leonard is going out right good. now. Herzog's not going to live with this any longer. Second time the Yankees have done away with Leonard. Second time Leonard's had a two-run lead. First time he lost it. It was three to two when split off came on. Now it's still two to one, but men on second and third and none out. And Munson then played exceptionally smart ball. We have Chris Shamblis coming up as the next hitter. He is a left-handed hitter. That means it is time to bring the left-hander in from the bullpen. So now here is Paul Splitoff into the ball game as Whitey Herzog goes back. Splitoff was an outstanding performer in the first part of the season when Kansas City ran off to a big lead in the American League Western Division. He finished the year 11 and 8 after tearing the sheath in his, the index finger of his. Uh, left hand and it took him a very long time to get over it. A small little injury but when a pitcher depends in almost entirely on point that. Uh, totally that disabling it. injury to a right. pitcher. So they had to as we pointed out on Sunday night send him back to the instructional league and then on the hope and Paul said suddenly it began to feel well again the tendonitis as you've described in the finger and the hope that Paul was right. He was well they brought him back Worked him the last day of the season against Minnesota. He did not impress, but the documented record is clear. This guy is a Yankee nemesis. The Yankee history has had a number of nemeses. Once there was a pitcher with Detroit, a good little right-hander named Frank Larry. All he had to do was throw his glove out in the mound. Gone were the Yankees. Splitoff was the winning pitcher on Sunday night. Five and two-thirds innings, no earned runs. He worked four full innings, struck out one, and walked two. So he gets an early call in the bottom of the first inning. And he will be pitched with nobody out to Chris Chambliss, Carlos May, unless we get a change there, and Greg Nettles, all three left-handed hitters. Roy White is at third base for New York, and Thurman Munson is at second base. One run in. Nobody out. The pitch is very high to Shambliss. Chris, 6'1", 210 pounds, and there is Roy White edging off third. And remember what we've told you about Shambliss's ability to hit left-handers. Munson up at second there. Now back to the man at third, the lead runner. The ball one pitch to... Chambliss is hit into left field. That should score White. He's quick. The throw from Poquette. It's a good throw, but it's off the mark. And the game is tied. That's getting it back even in a hurry. Now Figueroa's got a fresh start. It's nothing to nothing again. And let's start over. We've now got eight and a half innings to play. Eight and two-thirds. Roy White in the dugout. Thurman Munson perched out at second base. You've got one out on the sacrifice fly by Chris Chambliss. And Billy Martin is going to let Carlos May hit. He's got to let him hit for a couple of times at least, Billy Martin does, Keith. Right. To the fact that he'll completely waste him if he goes in and pinch hits for him right now. Two for six in the championship series, the four games we played. Note how far up the bat handle may go. Chokes way up on it. And here's the pitch from Split Off. Over for a call strike. Waiting on deck. Greg Nettles. Remember, May always looks almost by habit, by ritual, at a couple of pitches. The strike one pitch from Split Off. Swing and a miss for strike two. That time, he swung on he the second pitch. <laughs> he really looked at it. Thurman Munson at second base with one out. Concentration.
with some intensity in a guy's face. Rerun of the signs from Buck Martinez. A split off. Checks at second. Munson off. Pitch to May. Popped up on the left side. Out of play. Whitey Herzog did not start split off because he knows he has pitched sparingly over the latter half of the season because of the injury that Keith described. Now he finds himself in the position of having to put Paul in when he didn't think he could go a full game in the very first inning. There were none out when Paul came on. One cannot reasonably expect, despite the nemesis factor, that Paul will be able to go all the way, maybe six innings. Much foul. He got holes and two strikes. Billy Martin. Well, I wonder what he's thinking right now. I can't help you. Munson on second with one out. And the two strike pitch. Get out into left center field. Al Cowens coming up, makes the one handed catch. Munson retreats to the bag at second. You've got two down. Come on and doing the job. Got two retired. Made a good pitch right there. We could, I could see that Buck Martinez was sitting outside. Split orb hit the mitt. He got the fly ball. He got the two outs. And here's the home run king, Greg Nettle. At 32 in the regular season, Jackson at 27. <laughs> Reggie got a late start. That's true. Reggie did remarkably. <laughs> Pitch to Nettles. High inside, ball one. One of Greg Nettles home runs here at Yankee Stadium, a high fly ball as you look at his stance. But the second shot he hit was exactly that, a bullet. Rifled it into the seats. Playing with a very sore right ankle. Pitches outside, throw back to second, Munson's back. Well, you don't expect to see those kind of chances taken right there, but the guys, even though there's a great deal of pressure on the game, they're going on and playing it the way it should be. Let's look at Nettle's ankle. There, the protective. Yes, Ray. That right there comes from fouling a lot of balls off on the right. instep of his foot. Just a little protection. Right almost there. always the front foot, too. Foul. Yeah. No question about it. That comes from being a pull hitter, trying to get the bat out in front to see if he can reach that little short porch where the big payoff is. <laughs> Do you hit yourself much? There's Oscar Gamble on deck. Keith told you about him. 17 homers on the year. Was a very important cog in this Yankee machine as they won the Eastern Division Came in the over American from Cleveland League. And was allowed to play as soon as he got a haircut. Right. And to get rid of that hair. <laughs> Munson on second. Keith. Two and one pitch now. Nettles. High pop left side. Might be a play on it. Hotek. Brett together. Hotek. Short left. Down the line, makes the catch, the inning is over. So the Yankees and the Royals, after one complete inning of play in game number five, all even at 2 2. And at 2 2, we go to the top of the second inning for Kansas City. Jamie Quirk, the designated hitter. Cookie Rojas, the second baseman. And Fred Patek, the shortstop. Getting toward the bottom part of the Kansas City order, and it was the bottom two thirds of that Kansas City batting order yesterday that did all the damage. Jamie Quirk, a triple yesterday, and two runs batted in. He scored himself, and he hits it up, dirt down the right side, foul. Yes, he did, and that's not the way to start off an inning. Eddie, go back and rub that ball up, spit in that hand, and rub it down and in and out. He's Talk to the ball, maybe. He's still remembering that hanging curve he threw to Mayberry. Dreadful pitch. Should talk to the ball. Fouled off the other way. The ball is not doing nice things. So Kirk now, the youngster out of Whittier, California. With a two-strike count. 
Leading off for Kansas City, top of the second inning, takes high. It's one and two. It's up, well up. Got to keep that ball down if he wants to stay alive much longer. There you see Thurman Munson telling Eddie Figueroa to follow through on the ball. He's been leaving the ball up high and not following through quite well enough, enough for Thurman. He's telling him to throw this ball up right here. He's missing the target, Keith. That one was inside at the knees. It's two and two. You can see Thurman trying to give him direction on a ball, and he's not getting the ball where Thurman would like it to be. He called for that ball to be up right there, and the ball was inside and about thigh high. Fouled off. Count holds 2-2. Two -two. There's Cookie at 37 years of age. He was a very important figure yesterday in the victory for Kansas City. He's also a very steadying influence defensively. Ball is hit to left field. Roy White circles over, makes the catch. Ball was hit hard. Yes, it was. He threw it where he wanted to. See Thurman call for him to keep the ball away, turn the ball over so it'll sink. Got it where he wanted to. Burt hit it where he wanted to, right on the button. Now the batter is Cookie Rojas. You noticed when he was introduced, if you were with us, for the introduction of the players, had a lollipop in his mouth. Says it's energy. Mm -hmm. Also something to chew on before the anxiety gets you down. Figueroa lazes the fastball in for a strike ball. He also watches Deli Savalas. <laughs> 88 miles an hour on the fastball. The score is all even at 2-2 here at the top of the second inning. It's now 1-1 one one to Cookie Rojas. This program, an exclusive presentation of ABC Sports. Oh. Keith Jackson, Howard Cosell, and Reggie Jackson. Sitting here in the booth overlooking the field of play at Yankee Stadium in the final game, the game that means the American League pennant. And a chance, if you can call it that, to go play the Cincinnati Reds in the World Series. Rojas delivers it up the middle. Base hit for Cookie. So Cookie Rojas picks up his third hit in six trips. He's hitting at even 500. Definitely doing the job that they asked him to do. They put him in the lineup. They were looking for some leadership, some stability, and he sure is providing it. 37 years old. You can call it old if you want to, but when I get to 37, I sure hope I don't feel like I'm old. I hope I can feel like I can play baseball if I want to. They called him old, but 37 is not old, is it, guys? We told you yesterday it was a very good year. I like hearing it. <laughs> You're not that far away, Rich. Something to look forward to and something for us to look back on, I suppose. Here is Fred Fatek now, the shortstop <laughs> for Kansas City. And Fred Fatek having a good series. Six hits, 14 at bats. He has four runs batted in. He's been outstanding defensively. 5 4, 144 pounds. Ball one, the count. Right call. One and one breaking pitch was in. Freddie played last year and up in the 60s. He lost 20 pounds at the suggestion of his manager, Whitey Herzog, and Whitey checks him once a week. And for every pound over 145, it costs him $100. Outside corner, just on the black. And in case you don't know what that means, home plate is edged in black. And if you can get the ball in that area, You've got a pretty fair pitch. A little perimeter about an inch wide that goes around the whole plate. And when you're doing that, you are what we call in baseball dealing. <laughs> One and two pitch to Patek is high. Two and two. You're in charge. Cookie Rojas is on first. You've got one out. Perk is gone, but Perk hit it hard. It's kind of versatility this guy has had. With two out now, Rojas off second base, and the pitch to Buck Martinez. And we have been told now, I was introduced to Buck originally as Martinez. Reggie Jackson's middle name spelled the same way, pronounced Martinez. Reggie's been calling him Buck Martinez for I don't know how many years, but now we're told that the absolute correctness of the pronunciation is Martinez. Yeah. Right field, base set, three to he two. 
Ball gets away, and Buckle hit for second. Cookie scores. Bucks safe at second. It's a 3-2 ball game. I think I'm just going to call him Buck from now on because my middle name is Martinez, and I don't know what to call him. <laughs> there you see Buck go with the pitch quite well. Ball outside. Gamble charges the ball. Doesn't take a bad hop. He just kicks the ball. Bounces off over to his right. Here comes Mickey Rivers. Makes the throw in a second, but Bucks in with a sliding double. Oh, Two things, thus the importance of Ro Rojas Error. getting the second. And secondly, Martinez, or Martinez as we will now call him, in accordance with owner Ewing Kaufman's dictates, Martinez, <laughs> but number 21. A, a hidden hero in this series. Many key hits. Al Cowan's top of the order is up there. It is officially a single for Martinez and an error on the right fielder, Oscar Gamble. And action in the Yankee bullpen, as expected. Figueroa on the corner with a strike. One and one. Cowan. We've got some action in the bullpen, but I don't know if it's that as expected, Howard, because it's Grant Jackson. And everybody's still wondering where Kenny Holtzman is. Martinez off second base. Buck with a big lead. Ball tapped over the mound. Randolph has it. Throws to first. And the inning is over. But the Kansas City Royals regained the lead here in the top of the second inning after one and a half. Lead the Yankees. This lollipop to Cookie Rojas for the evening. Telly Savalas. The only one, not Yul Brenner, but Telly Savalas. Well, I thought it was Otis Sistrom. <laughs> <laughs> Otis, number 80, Oakland Raiders. Bottom third of the order now for the Yankees. Oscar Gamble, Willie Randolph, and Fred Stanley. As we go to the bottom of the second inning, and it's foul. And I'll guarantee you if that one had gone into the crowd, somebody would have had some sore fingers. Did I say 80? 60. The man of the hour, Keith. All split off. Dennis Leonard pitched to three hitters, had very little success, and split off was summoned. And he did the job, and it's now two strikes on Oscar Gamble as Oscar looks at a breaking pitch, and it's in on the corner. Let's make note of the fact he's come on. He's pitched well already. He's starting to set a pattern, starting to get in a groove. That one's high and away. One and two. They've got to stop before he gets going. One ball and two strikes. You see him get the pitch, get it to 0 and 2, and then he'll go away with a bad pitch. Cardinal rule. Don't give up a base hit with two strikes and no balls on him. Just miss. Two and two. Oscar Gamble, who represents home run power. Now let's make note. If he comes back into the strike zone now, he's got things working for him. Got him on the outside corner. Strike three call. One out. He might have it going. You see a guy set a pattern like that. He makes a couple of pitches, gets a couple of good strikes, and he tries to get the hitter to go after a bad pitch to see if he's swinging a bad ball. Why give him a good pitch when you have things going? When you want to come back and you have the ability to make a good pitch like that, you're in great shape. Willie Randolph takes a fastball down the pipe. Strike right one call. Willie two for 14 and a run batted in. And he didn't like it either. He didn't like that call. One and one to Willie. Pitching fine. Saw him strike out Gamble with a F the ball on the plate. Art France, the plate umpire. Two and one pitch. Popped up. Not in the short right. Coming over. Al McRae staggers a little bit but makes <laughs> the catch. That's a designated hitter playing the outfield. Playing a new position. He hasn't played a lot of defense all year long. And 
Due to the injury to Amos Otis, out with the ankle injury after the first ball game. He's got to force to play the outfield now because Whitey is trying to get as much offense into the ball game as possible. Consequently, he does making the designated hitter, Jamie Quirk. Keith? Fred Stanley, Yankee shortstop, ninth hitter in the order. Makes it a little high. Ball one. Two out. Nobody on. Kansas City leading 3-2, bottom of the second inning. Game five, the last one of the American League Championship Series. There's a strike, gets one and one. And I'll tell you this, Flitorf looks very quick. He is firing the ball. He is totally confident against this particular ball club. His only question will be stamina if one goes by what's happened in the past. Just low. It's two and one. We time him at 90 miles an hour on the fastball. Incidentally, we had Ellie Howard hit some one bouncers on the infield at Kansas City and here at Yankee Stadium to give you some difference between artificial turf and real grass. We'll define that later. Bouncer to Fred at third base. George is through on the money. Friend Fred Stanley is out. The inning is over. The Yankees gone in order. After two complete innings of play, it's Kansas City three, New York two. Royals in the top of the third inning, it's Tom Poquette, George Brett, and John Mayberry. To finish the story on the AstroTurf or the Parton Turf or whatever the artificial surface might be, Ellie Howard hit a bunch of ground balls the other day in Kansas City. We took the Jugs radar gun. Then he came to Yankee Stadium and hit 20 ground balls. Same stroke, certainly not a scientific measurement, but the difference. The artificial turf is roughly eight miles an hour faster than real grass. And to see if we can go a little bit further, we've had Figueroa clock tonight one time at 92 miles an hour, and then we've seen Nolan Ryan, the fastest pitcher in the game, at right around 100. That's an eight mile an hour difference. Oh, but it, Figueroa traps, throws, Poquette's out. Poquette trying to drag it to the right side, did not get it a far enough around, and Figueroa made a good play on it. You know, Keith, we asked many of the members of the Cincinnati Reds whom they would most want to play against in the World Series and why. And during the course of this contest, you're going to be meeting many of the Cincinnati Reds. Guys like Eppery Pete Rose, slugging George Foster, and the rest of that awesome bunch, including Johnny Bench. And you'll hear from them. Now here's the man that figures he owns Figueroa. George Brett hitting 467 in the championship series. He's at bat here in the top of the third. He doubled off Figueroa and scored a run in the first inning. Fouls this one over the left side out of play. Went in there first pitch with a changeup, then came back and you saw Munson twist his hand a little bit. Turn the ball over, try to keep the ball away from Brett. There's really no way to pitch Brett. However, in this ballpark, the ball's got to stay away from him because he can still turn that ball and hit that ball in the right field bleachers. And the way he's hit Ed Figueroa, Figueroa's got to be careful. One out, nobody on. As Poquette tried to butt and was thrown out by the pitcher. And that one's high and tight. Hello. In the meantime, Figueroa has given up four hits and three runs in two and a third innings, and therefore action continues in the Yankee bullpen. Brad Jackson warming up, left-hander. One and two to Brett. Foul. Big John Mayberry on deck. Two run home run first inning. It's your man Keith. Well your baseball you talk 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 and talk about the law of averages and when you're that big and that strong with a stick in your hand sooner or later something's going to happen. One and two to Brett. A high fly ball into center field for Mickey Rivers. Two gone. This game telecast under television rights granted by Major League Baseball solely for the entertainment of the viewing audience and any publication, reproduction, retransmission, or other use of the pictures, descriptions, and accounts of the game without the explicit written consent of Major League Baseball prohibited. Any commercial or other use of the program, such as charging admission for its showing, similarly prohibited. Two out, bases clean, Mayberry up. Goes well away, ball one. Well, he knows what he can do to him. He's going to establish the fact he's going to try to stay away from him, and I'm sure that they've told him in the dugout last inning that they've had great success with Mayberry by keeping the ball away from him. 
Not like that. Hard shot to right. Willie Randolph slips, falls down, throws, gets in. So the defensive shift by the New York Yankees pays off as Mayberry gets it hard to Randolph. The Kansas City Royals going in order after two and a Pete Rose, whom would you like to play? I think I was a I think it's a lot of tradition with the Yankees being in the World Series. Ever since I was a little kid, whenever you think of the World Series, I used to think of the New York Yankees. And also, personally, I would because I feel that I know their pitching staff. And uh, I'm not implying I can hit their pitching staff, but I personally feel more comfortable batting off the pitchers that I faced before. And I faced Hunter, I faced Holzman, I faced Dora Alexander, Grant Jackson, and... Uh, and fellas like that. So, you know, I, I would feel more comfortable by facing the Yankees, although Kansas City's got a fine ball club. Some comments of the man who made belly flopping and stealing bases fashionable, the <laughs> scrappy leader of the Cincinnati Reds, Pete Rose. The batter now for the New York Yankees. As we go to the top of the order is Mickey Rivers. Roy White will follow, and then comes Thurman Munson. World Series opens on Saturday, and Mickey Rivers, who hit a triple to lead off for New York and scored a run in the bottom of the first inning, fouls it away. And PD's audio, Keith, wasn't that distinct. He wants to play the Yankees, as you could have deduced. Get up the middle. So Mickey Rivers with a 341 batting average against Paul Splithoff. Is having a big night, a triple and a single and two trips to the plate for Mickey, leading off for the Yankees. He makes him go. He's hit 351 off the split off for his career, so I'm sure we'll see some action down there by Rivers. Will he run? Will he get something going? I'm sure that he will. You get a guy like that on the bases, it makes things happen. He's got your infielders wondering who's going to cover second base if he goes down the field. He's got all kinds of movement happening. The catcher's thinking about making the good throw. He takes and distracts from the concentration of the pitcher. Keeps him from thinking completely about the hitter. Keep but the left-hander should be able to keep him a little bit closer to the bag. Mayberry holds against him. Roy White slides up the bat handle as if to punt to move him up towards second base. Pulls it back and takes ball one. Elston Howard is the coach at first for New York. And Dick Hauser is the coach at third. Got it going now. Listen to the crowd. Kansas City leading 3 2. New York at bat, bottom of the third inning. Split off is retired prior to Mickey Rivers, six straight. And he makes an easy throw to keep Mickey close with Thurman Munson waiting in the on deck circle, the big Yankee captain and catcher. Roy White, a switch hitter, the left fielder. Outside. Breaking pitch and it is two and nothing. You've got to get this runner over to second base, get him in the scoring position. See all kinds of things happening out there. You, your outfielders are wondering what to do with the ball, getting it in their minds, what to do with it if he hits the ball in the outfield, where to throw it because Rivers can fly. We're going to see some action on the bases now. Keep. Does not go. Pitch is in there for a strike. Two and one. A surprising two balls and no strikes. And he takes the ball that's a time when you can just about crank up and Jump. let it fly it's either that or a breaking pitch you've got a chance to lay it down nice soft stroke I think Billy Martin a little bit disturbed that Roy didn't put that one down if the bond in fact been called apparently it has two and one go to first side there Mayberry having to scratch it as Whitey Herzog <laughs> looks on from the dugout there's Martin and they go to first trying to keep him close just to see if they can take that one extra step away from him just make keep him from going to third base on a base hit they help him get a double play at second base because, as you said before, and you can't say it enough, he can fly low to the ground. That one's high and away. Snap throw to first to Rivers is back. Keeping him in check. Well, Buck took a shot at him. You can see now, it's very obvious the attention that Mickey Rivers is drawing. Throws over to first base, throws from the catcher, excitement from the crowd. From the crowd, he just turns everybody on, turns on the action, makes things happen.
Three and one to White. Outside, ball four. Well, that's what they wanted. That's right, there you go. Take a little con concentration away from Splitorf because he was sailing along. Now with nobody out, you've got Yankees at second and first. And both of them can really run. Rivers and White. And Thurman Munson. Power at the plate. This is really the first time that split off has been in trouble against the Yankees in two outings. Now let's see how he reacts. Remember, he has pitched but sparingly this year, at least the last half of the year. Munson hit a home run off split off earlier in the season. The only hit that he had off split off. Now you have Hester and Patton both throwing in the Kansas City bullpen. Nobody out. Rivers on second and White on first for New York. And Al Collins is playing Munson in right center. Left center is wide open and so is the area down the line. And the third is way off the mark. Maybe running into a few problems. We're going to get a little confidence right now from Galen Cisco. Been having some problems right now. Try to get him back on the track. Take a little pause. Keep you Buckeye pullback going to the mound. He's been the pitching coach at Kansas City for six seasons, walking out with George Brett. Obviously, the, the presence of Mickey Rivers on base, a disturbing influence on split off as Andy Hassler throws hard on the bullpen, along with Marty Patton. Patton has not pitched in the series, neither is Al Fitzmorris. Hassler hands. There they are. The left hander is Hassler, and the right hander is Patton. Well, if split off has to go, and that remains to be seen, it hasn't eventuated yet. Probably Herzog will want to go with the southpaw, keep that southpaw lineup in. The Yankees not being on the record as effective against southpaws as against right-handers all year long. Tennessee to agree with you, Howard. Even though he's pitched, he pitched here Monday, uh, or Tuesday rather. I have, a, have to agree with you because I want to keep the left-hander on the left hand hitting lineup for the Yankees. Runners edge off the pitch to Munson. Punch foul down the first base side. No matter how, how cold, the Yanks are hot. Well, we'll see about that. Thurman trying to hit to right behind the runners. Reggie expounded on that in Thurman's earlier time at bat. And men on first and second right now. Nobody out. Let's get him in a scoring position. 105 RBIs. He's been known to chauffeur of home. Second, second. Pitch to Munson. Get down the right side and in the crowd. Just foul. I know the feeling, Hal McRae. I've been in right field myself, too. I was hoping that ball would go foul, too, if I'd have been out there. So I'm right with you, big guy. McRae oh, makes the move on that ball. If it's fair, uh, and he makes the catch, Rivers would be sitting on third with one out. Possibly White also, because Hal does not throw real well, Pete. Right. No Rivers would have moved up. Nobody out, and it's one and two on Thurman Munson. Fouled off again over the right side and back in the crowd. Thurman still trying to manipulate that bat, hit it to right field. Splits off is an interesting kid to study, Reggie, when he's on the mound with those specs, seemingly squinting even through them to catch the signs. Look. It used to be a scary sight. Ryan Dern out there, a little bit wild. <laughs> 100 miles an hour. Look out. Thurman Munson. One, two pitch. Foul. The third base side out of play and Mickey Rivers way down the line headed toward third suddenly Paul was low and inside that can be a terribly dangerous pitch to Thurman Munson well he's, he's a pretty good hitter well not a pretty good hitter but a great hitter so he's got to pitch him tough he's got a 476 lifetime average against Paul Splitorf got a base hit off the last time he's two for three off in the series so he's got to be careful 
right there, but he's got to try to keep Mickey Rivers close. If you can get that one extra step or keep him from getting the extra step, it may mean the difference in scoring a run or not. No one in the outfield where the, where the Royals has a great arm. And uh, boy, that little guy can put the pressure on you. Mickey Rivers. Wind is blowing almost straight out from home plate right now. guys on the bench look for the big guys and I guess that's why that some of the salaries are inflated or whatever you want to say but when the money's on the one. line when the money's on the line <laughs> you expect to get it from the big guy and the big guys want to be there in those situations please Don't just like sure. you Howard <laughs> <laughs> big time you gotta be there that's it right? that's it put it on the table right <laughs> out of the bullpen for the Kansas City Royals Looks like Marty Patton. That's exactly who it is, Marty Patton. Andy Hessler alongside of him. The pitch to Chris Hamblitz. The Yankee first baseman fouls it off, and Dick Hauser makes the play. Make note, of the, make note of the infield, the way it sits right now. They're back in double play depth. Depth, a ground ball, the second base is shortstop, and they won't have a play at Roy White at the plate. So they're conceding a run to see if they can get the double play. White edging off third. There he is, and nobody out. Yankees bidding for the lead in the ball game here at the bottom of the third inning. You see a situation here where he might try to pitch Chambliss up to see if he can get a pop up. He hits the ball anywhere, it's less his first or third. They're going to give up a run. One and one count on Chris. Foul back, it's one and two. I'll tell you, you've got to swallow a little hard when you start throwing Chambliss up high, though, because he can lose it. There's Roy White sitting at third base, representing the go-ahead run for New York, and Thurman Munson is over at first base. Nobody out. A tough situation right here. What makes men and what makes pros pros, he's just got to go after him. He's got no choice. He's got to try to either strike him out or pop him up, and the way to do it is by pitching him up. What we have here in the bottom of the third inning is a rerun of what happened in the bottom of the first inning. It's true. First and third, nobody down. Ball toward Cookie Rojas. They go to second, get one. The run scores. Oh. Go back to first, throws him off the bag. White scores, Yankees lead 4-3. See what kind of slide Thurman Munson came up with. As I said, they'll be given the run up, going in the home, going after the double play, trying to get two outs. They believe they're going to score more runs this ball game. The throw to second, and there's Munson. Didn't quite see it, but he took Patek out of the play and caused a bad throw. Nice job by Mayberry. Nice, nice job by Munson. Another little thing that's not shown in the scorebook. Break up that double play. Now only one out instead of two. And here's Carlos May. Four runs, five hits and an error for the Yankees. Three runs, four hits and no errors for Kansas City. The Yankees are cooking here in the bottom of the third as May hits a high fly ball into center field. Al Cowens drifting in and has the second out of the inning. Chris Chambliss comes back to first, having been aboard safely on that field as Kansas City missed on the effort of the double play.
New York won the opener 4-1. Kansas City came back 7-3. Then New York 5-3. Then Kansas City 7-4. And this is the final game in the best of five championship series. The batter will be Greg Nettles. Paul Splithorpe steps off the pitching rubber as Hal McRae is doing some cleaning up out in right field. Great medals. High pop. To down the left field line and short left as uh, Fred Patek made the play on him. So he's 0 for 1. Well, you can see he has hit a couple of home runs. Big day yesterday. Two out now. Shambles off first. Two runs in. Little's pitch just outside. Cowens plays medals in deep right center. McCray. Well back in right. Just outside again. Two balls and no strikes. Well, he's behind right now, 2-0. Oh. I'm sure you won't see Mr. Nettles being bashful. He'll be letting the shaft out, as they say in golf. Get the old one wood out. The driver. High fly ball. Freddie Patek goes back. Cowens comes in. Patek is the man. Makes the catch. And the inning is over. But the New York Yankees strike for two runs. And after three complete innings of play, take a 4-3 lead. Cincinnati Reds, who do you want to play in the series? Well, I think there's still some magic attached to the Yankees. And if I had my preference, uh, I'd prefer to go to Yankee Stadium and uh, play there. I've never been there, and it'd be quite an experience. Bob is no longer that svelte young man that came out of Long Beach, is he? No, he was some <laughs> big bonus baby with the Pittsburgh Pirates. He was supposed to become one of the greatest Pirates ever played. That didn't happen either. He's been around Montreal. Probably be one of the designated hitters for Sparky Anderson in the World Series. You're looking at Hal McRae, who spent the better part of the season for Kansas City as a designated hitter. He stands at the plate. And following Hal McRae, then we'll have Jamie Quirk and Cookie Rojas, and McRae pops it up to the infield. Shambliss gets the call from the pitcher, Figueroa. Takes it away. Big Ed directing traffic. Didn't want anybody fooling with his first baseman on that one. Let me tell you, Keith, I thought split off got away cheaply. One in, men on first and third, none out. Got out of it. Shambliss on the force, and then retired the left hand. But his major problem is going to be from here on in stamina. I think it's clear already that having come on in the third on Sunday night past and worked through the eighth, he uh, is not as sharp as he was on Sunday night. Now it is Jamie Quirk, the designated hitter, facing the right-hander Ed Figueroa. 28 years of age today. Hits it over the mound. Stanley charges. Throws on the rock. Gets it. That's one of my favorite plays right there, Keith. Shows how much agility, how much movement, how much lateral movement a guy has. Really shows what kind of an athlete a guy is. Don't have to hit a lot of home runs. Don't have to hit a lot of great average. But look at the movement, the ability. They call it baseball. How much cat a fella has in him. How he moves. Do you see how much he was thrown out by? Remember, we remarked yesterday, Reggie, Quirk is without foot speed. Cookie Rojas, single, stolen base, scored a run. Back in the second inning for Kansas City. Yankees are leading here in the top of the fourth. Four to three. And Rojas hits a fly ball. It's well hit to right and left. Boy back to make the catch, and Kansas City is gone in order. So after three and a half innings of play in the championship game, the Yankees lead the Royals 4-3. Yankee Stadium. For the Yankees, it'll be Oscar Gamble, Willie Randolph, and Fred Stanley. And <laughs> Telly Savas. Way to go, Telly. Telly's all wrapped up in all that fur, but out of the Yankee bullpen, it looks like they've got some kind of a small container out there and a small fire to keep themselves warm. 
Bottom of the fourth inning. For the Yankees, they lead four to three. Paul Spittoff delivers to Gamble. And he goes up to punt it. Foul tips it. And it's strike one. Gamble struck out looking. Willie Randolph will follow and then stand. The bottom third of the order has not been able to break through against Splitoff so far. It's been the top of the order that's done all the damage so far in the game for New York. Gamble hasn't played against left-handers all year long. He's had 15 home runs off right-handers, only two off left-handers. He's only hit 178, Howard. Fouled away and into the crowd. And, of course, you, we have covered the point as well that Billy Martin wants to keep Elliott Maddox and Lou Pinella for later in the game in case he needs some pinch hitting. Ellie Hendricks, though, the catcher, came up and delivered. Uh, and the only time he's been called on in the series is split off, throws hard outside. One ball and two strikes now, the count. Special quality to be a pinch hitter. There we see the split off. In control. Can he keep dealing? Aces. I tell you, that took a little courage on Oscar's part to take that Yes, it did. You see, again, uh, ball and two strikes, and he went and tried to make a pitch. So he struck, maybe he's starting to settle back down into a groove again. I believe Kansas City will score again. So the Yankees better get some action going. Just low. In fact, quite low. Yankee Stadium. Rebuilt in a way and refurbished a lot. To the tune of about $100 million. <laughs> $55 million of which was the allocated cost to the city. Peanuts. This is New York. Mm -hmm. Three and two. Bounce past the pitcher. Rojas got a hurry. Cookie snaps it. Mayberry scoops it. A good play by John. Excellent play. Big league all the way. There he is. Providing leadership and stability to the ball club, doing his job. Rojas made a good play, but so did Mayberry. Now watch this. Got a half a pound of dirt with it. Doesn't matter. Here's Willie Randolph. Gets it to the right side. Bang, bang, Mayberry. Two gone. do make it look easy, don't they? He's got good hands for a big man. Sure good, soft hands. Not like mine. <laughs> In fact, I noticed I thinking, that yesterday when you about poured <laughs> your coffee all over well, I was thinking about signing a glove contract with Bethel <laughs> Steel. <laughs> Ball is inside. One and nothing now, and you are looking at Fred Stanley, the Yankee shortstop. He's had an interesting series thus far. Look at that batting average. Just off the outside corner. Two out, nobody on. Well, again, here's a guy that knows his limitation and his, and his capacity. Just try to hit the ball to right field. Just try to move it around. Just get it over the infielder's head because he knows he's not a home run hitter. But there was one night here, Reggie, during the season. It was against the Minnesota Twins. He hit a home run down the left field line, just foul. He got back up there, and he repeated. This time, just fair. The ball went about 314 feet and in. Home run. There's the strike. Three and one. Definitely taking. Now, will he be taking on this pitch? We heard about that home run. When a guy like Stanley hit him, everybody in the league opens up their eyes. Yep, taken all the way. Three, two. Trying to be a base runner. Trying to get on base. Got to admire that guy. That pitch was just low. And Stanley waits him out, gets the free pass. And it works. You see him using his ability. Down the left field line, in toward home plate here at Yankee Stadium. You can see it is absolute capacity. The wind continues to swirl around, and if it's blowing in any particular direction, it will be straight away. Here's the top of the order now. Mickey Rivers, two for two. You see, a triple and a single, and he has scored twice. And he has been troubled tonight. Swing and a miss. He's got some of the weirdest actions at the plate of anyone I've ever seen. There's Paul Splitoff, but Mickey Rivers is always moving, always dancing, kind of fidgety kind of a ball player. Both feet moving. Like he's Both running feet. in the box. 
Oh, one. Just how. In batting practice tonight, Mickey hit two in the seats down the right field line. He has occasional power, Keith. We've discussed that earlier on in the series, and he proved it in the very opening inning when he tripled over Pocat's head. He hit one here this year, a home run into the right center bleachers. It was a tremendous post. Stanley off first, two out for the Yankees. Bottom of the fourth inning, Rivers fouls it away. And it's one ball, two strikes on Mickey. Waiting on deck is Roy White, who's also scored twice tonight. So it's Rivers and White who've done all the scoring. They've gotten all of the Yankee four runs. Two piece. Go to first. I don't know if we can get a look, but you see the second baseman and shortstop in constant conversation to see who is going to cover that bag. A sophisticated game, baseball. Rivers hits it foul down the left side. Got some wood on it, though, and knocks it well back into the crowd. He really did. He hit that a good piece. A little more to the right. Could have gotten in there. It had that much carry. There's a lot of things that go on during the baseball game. Even when it's kind of quiet, you have your second baseman, the shortstop. You wonder who's going to cover. You have the concentration on the batter by the pitcher and the catcher and the outfielders wondering where they're going to throw the ball when they receive it during this kind of a situation. Ball to the right side in the right field base hit. Brett Stanley going around second heading for third. Throw comes in to Tuki Rojas. We've got Yankees at the corner. He is a hot hitter tonight. I might as well tell you folks that principal owner George Steinbrenner was not happy with Mickey Rivers performance last night. And he had Mickey privately up in his office after the game, some 30 minutes after the contest had ended, and he let Mickey have a good piece of his mind. Apparently, it took hold because Mickey is a hot hitter tonight. Andy Hessler and Marty Peck again in the Kansas City bullpen. With Fred Stanley at third, there's the right-hander Peck always amazes me how somebody that never played the game can tell somebody how to play. <laughs> Don't be bitter. Roy Don't White bitter. at the plate. There's Andy <laughs> Hassler throwing in the Kansas City bullpen. All one on Roy White. I'll keep it in. <laughs> <laughs> Better have to. Don't come down the open clubhouse to the Baltimore clubhouse and tell me what to do. Roy White. Need a base hit. Just high. As Stanley on third. The Rivers on first. Two out. Bottom of the fourth inning. The Yankees lead 4-3. Two balls, no strikes to White. Three balls, no strikes. I tell you this. On that particular pitch now, Reggie Jackson, looked to me like Splitoff was trying to reach for a little too much. Well, Splitoff may get out of this situation. But now, second straight inning, he's had to work very hard again. And there's no way, in my judgment, with the limited amount of pitching he's done this year, that he can go very long tonight. There's the count. Nemesis should end tonight. Galen Sisko and Whitey Herzog across the way. It's Billy Martin looking on. Yankee dug out on the first base side and White support. Base is loaded. Two out. Time call by Kansas City as Brett will come to the mound. Oh, well, he's loaded them up. Now Whitey Herzog coming out of the dugout. That could be it. Yeah, I'm sure it will be, Keith. We're going to get another pitcher because he doesn't want to look at Thurman Munson. He hits left-handers exceptionally well. He's hit 470 against Paul Splitoff in his career, and he's got a hot bat tonight. He's swinging a bat good. So sure we'll see Marty Patton right now. Marty Patton. Been around a while. He pitches more now perhaps with dial than he ever has in his career. So time is called here at the bottom of the fourth inning. The Yankees leading the Royals 4-3. And we'll be back with more.
Yankees in front, 4-3, with two out, and the base is loaded now in the bottom of the fourth inning. Ball split off leaves, and 33-year-old Marty Patton, 5'10", 180 pounds, comes in with an 8-14 record on the season, but a very good earned run average, 2.49. The book on split off. He went three and two-thirds innings, two earned runs, three hits, struck out one, and walked three. He relieved Dennis Leonard, who pitched to three batters and was roughed up for two earned runs. And Thurman Munson will be the first man to hit for the New York Yankees against Marty Patton. Munson with a pair of singles in the ball game tonight. And characterizing Patton, Keith, he is not overpowering, but he's been doing better than expected in the late going of the season. He keeps his fastball away from a right-handed hitter. He can't hold runners, according to the scouting reports, and has balked occasion. That's the scouting report on Marty Pack. Now we get to the nub of it, as you would say. He goes against the Yankees' most solid ball play. And as Munson walks in for this moment of drama, 56,821 people here, which is a new record for Yankee Stadium. Red Stanley is over there on third base. Mickey River is on second base. Roy White is on first. Two are out. Two out. Patton now needs to get it out to avoid. He's swinging the bat good. Royals are facing the stack deck right now in the Yankees' favor. They got the big gun at the plate with the bases drunk. Loaded or filled. Ball is hit to left field. Poquet holds his position, makes the catch, and on one pitch, Marty Patton gets Thurman Munson. And so Kansas City avoids the beginning as the Yankees are gone. And after four, it's 4-3. Four the fifth inning for the Kansas City Royals. It'll be Fred Fontek, Buck Martinez, and the top of the order, Al Cowan. Well, that's the city at night. Downtown, the foot of Manhattan, Battery Park, World Trade Center, that big building which we identified yesterday. There are two of them. You only see one, one behind the other. Back to the action. But Ed Figueroa pitching to five foot four. Ready contact. A swing and a miss on a breaking pitch or strike one. May I say this, Keith? In perspective, this reminds me of last Sunday night's game. The Yankees went ahead then three to two. I'll continue in a moment. Tight with it. But in that game, if you remember, they had nine hits after three and a third innings and only three runs. Split off, got away in a potentially destructive situation, explosive, cheaply. And Kansas City got out of it last inning. The Yankees have not capitalized. Ball is hit high on the right side of the infield. Playable Shambliss backing up. Chris in foul ground. Makes the catch. One out. Ed Figueroa now has retired seven straight. Seems to have settled down, Reg. Eight Eight seem, he has seemed to settle, have settled down, Howard. Uh, he's going to have to get some kind of good rhythm because I'm sure that at the slightest sign of any slippage at all that Billy Mark Martin will get him out there because he's got four or five guys out there ready and willing and able that's for sure Martin is again <laughs> in the left field base hit for Buck played very well in the series he certainly has he's an unsung leader of this club in this series coming into it batting 221 on the season Reg. no question about it as we've said before a short series anything can happen a lot of unsung un unsung heroes <laughs> <laughs> a lot of unsung heroes and you never know what can happen a guy can get a hot bat look at fred stanley and of course a guy like munson that just continues to apply the pressure Al Cowan's uh, batting average, however, in the series has been shrinking some here at Yankee Stadium. Now down to 158. He's at the plate and takes ball one from Figueroa. We get more action now in the Yankee bullpen. Looks like it might be Jackson again. It is. Grant Jackson, number 25, left-hander. There's two. The it's over to Stanley. Steps on the back. Goes to the first. Play. And the inning is over. 
So after four and a half innings of play, New York, four runs, six hits, one error. Kansas City, three runs, five hits, no error. Cindy Hassler on the mound now in relief, and Don Gullett of the Cincinnati Reds. Whom do you want to go against in the forthcoming World Series? I have a feeling that uh, New York possibly might win the ball, uh, the ball game tonight, but uh, they, nobody knows can ha what can happen in a ball game like this. But uh, I'm looking forward, really, uh, going back to New York. Uh, we were there uh, in 1973 when we played the Mets, and uh, I think we want to get back to New York. And uh, I've always heard a lot about Yankee Stadium, and I'd like to be there and like to try my luck here. Comments of Don Gullett of the Cincinnati Reds, the hard-throwing left-hander. Andy Hassler now is the third Kansas City pitcher. I'll tell you, our fourth Kansas City pitcher. Uh, Marty Patton did his job. He came in through one pitch. He got <laughs> Thurman Munson out, and uh, Marty now sitting in the dugout watching the first appearance in the series for Hassler. He pitched five innings, four earned runs on four hits, struck out three, and walked three. On the season, there the total. He's been well documented as having shaken off a thunderous 18 game losing streak with California waved for the Angels picked up by Kansas City finished the year five and six for the Royals and now Andy Hessler a big six foot five inch 215 pounder out of Phoenix Arizona delivers to Chris Chambliss leading off for the New York Yankees here in the bottom of the fifth inning Chambliss will be followed by Carlos May and then Greg Nettle and May is in the on deck circle. Chambliss hits it hard to right center field. May go. It's up against the wall. Al McRae picks it up, throws it in. Two bases for Chambliss. It's a beautiful thing to see that man stand up there against left hand. Well, left hand has never really I bothered Chris Howard. He's been a consistent ball player. He's played every day since he's been in the big league. He's never really has been best against left-handers, and that's the reason he's had an outstanding season this year. In there every day. That's the only way you can drive in over 90 runs. Keith, got a, oh, I'm sorry, Reds. That's his ninth hit, Keith, in the championship series. That ties Pete Rose. Right. Hear that, Pete? Got a man on second base right now. The obvious situation. Will he bunt and try to get him over to third? Four to three. Will they try to make it five to three? So the other team has to get three runs. Keep Mark Littell. They call him Country Boy in Kansas City. He is the ace fireman. At least he throws the hardest of all of the relievers for Kansas City. And Carlos May now at the plate. Nobody out. And Chris Chambliss on second base. New York leading 4-3. And the Yankees at bat here at the bottom of the fifth. Very important to score a run night right now. They can put a lot of pressure on Kansas City right now, psychologically, just by taking advantage of this scoring opportunity. If the Kansas City Royals get out of it, they will have some momentum going for them. So a psychological game going right now. Hassler's pitch, good one. Tough. As Carlos tried to bunt it and missed it. He's tough. Big three-quarter arm throwing left-hander and a little bit wild just wild enough to kind of keep you off balance at the plate he's even tough to punt Keith. Strike two and it didn't bunt it didn't bunt nope. nobody out they he's tough to run over this guy is tough now Carlos May's job will it be to hit the ball to the right side of the infield again can't emphasize enough. You can't say it enough. The name of the game is to win, and to do that, you've got to get runners in scoring position. Struck him out on three pitches. Well, there was an opportunity where you could have had a pinch hitter, whatever. But the Yankees have a lead right now. Maybe Billy is saving him for an opportune time, or when he feels he really needs it. Now the batter is Greg Nettle. With one out, Chambliss on second base, having double to lead the inning. And Andy Hester, the fourth Kansas City pitcher in the ball game. Look at Big Andy. Little problem with the signs. Maybe he didn't want to throw him that pitch. Uh, you have a situation where the catcher may have read the scouting report and he knows what the manager wants to do where he wants to pitch him consequently Andy Hassler may not agree let's go out and have a little summit meeting now they're asking for Kett 
the Kansas City left fielder to come in some. Trotman way back at left. They bring him in. The center fielder Cowens well over into right center. And you see the big hole there in left center field for Greg Neville. High fly ball on the right side of the infield for John Mayberry. Just fair. John puts it away, and now you've got two out with Chambliss still sitting out at second base. He failed to advance him. For the Yankees at this point, even though they're one run ahead, the omens are not good. They continue not to capitalize on scoring opportunities. That's the key point here. Because sooner or later, one can expect Kansas City to explode. Oscar Gamble, 250 hitter in the championship series. He hasn't hit well off left-handers either, Keith. He's looked at a call, third strike, and grounded out second to first. Tonight, he's 0 for 2, strike one. Dips it foul. Astor taking his time, coming down off the rubber. Going to rub the ball. Take off the trimmers that might grip him. I tell you, you've got to be pumped up under these circumstances. You've got to be high. You have a look at his feet, how he's standing, how he's going after it. What's he thinking? Tough situation for the big guy. <laughs> he's got him running and hiding right now, Keith. Out is one and one on Oscar Gamble. And again, they uh, play Oscar to pull, or that is the center fielder goes into right center with him. And let's make note, if they get out of this inning, they're going to be psychologically up. Jim's him inside, two and one. A situation where the Yankees fail to advance that leadoff double over the third base. And when you're out there on the field, you know what this, these things mean. Get that runner over to third in the scoring position. If they don't do it, it's a success for the defensive ball club. Jim's off second. Hester pitches. Gamble hits it foul down the left field line in the crowd. And Christopher will go back to second base. Mark Littell is the man right now in the Kansas City bullpen. Young pitcher that can really throw the baseball hard. Or if you like, swiftly. Railway Express, Wells Fargo right now. Instant coffee. 2-2 to Gamble. Hassler off. Wind whipping around, swirling the papers, swirling the dust. It's been gusty all day in New York City. What a sign that winter's coming. Hit inside. It's full 3 2. You see right there, it missed his target. Buck Martinez was sitting outside. Oscar Gamble moved back off the plate from an inside fastball. Three runs, five hits, no errors for the Royals. Four runs, seven hits, one error for the Yankees. Yankees have been at the bottom of the fifth inning. Three-two pitch to Gamble. Check swing, roller, let it go, it'll be foul, and Hessler scoops it up the moment it goes outside the chalk line. He's tough. He keeps you off balance, as I said before, and you haven't really seen Oscar Gamble or any of the left-handed hitters have a real good full cut, a good swing off of this guy. Chambliss, double. He's annoying. He's uncomfortable. And Chambliss hit the first pitch with for a double. Do you know what? As big as he is and as strong as he is and as athletic he is, his wife, Deborah, can run him on the golf course. She is a good player. Yes, yes. From Arizona. Yes. Right. A pretty blonde. Full count to Gamble, and Oscar again comes back away. Late umpire Art France calling time. Chris Chambliss at second base, two out. It's a in the hitter squared off here, and Hessler steps off. Playing game. In the series, the Yankees have not hit the Royals 52 to 34. But the Royals have scored more runs, and it's still two games apiece. Right. <laughs>
Three two pitch. Low ball four. So it's a walk for Oscar Gampo. Now you've got two on with two out as Oscar goes to first. Elston Howard there and over at second it's Chris Jambos. And he probably wishes he had a jacket by now. There's some conversation. Now you've got Willie Randolph up, Keith. On the series, he's only two for 14. But I remind you that during the season, this kid rarely killed a rally. Now, it's a clutch moment. And Hessler comes high for ball one. And here comes Galen Sisko out of the dugout, going to the mound. Go out and talk to him right now. Tell him to settle down a little bit, big guy. You got good stuff. Throw the ball over the plate. Give yourself a chance. You got no chance if you walk guys and give them free passes and put them on base. Make them hit the ball. Don't lose. Make them beat you. Make them hit the ball. But make them hit them at somebody. Try to. Give your team a chance to help you. Latell remains active in the Kansas City bullpen. A ball one count on Willie Randolph with Shamless at second, Gamble at first. And Hester is outside pitch. The temperature now in the low 50s may get to the 40s before the game is done. Wow, one and looked like he reached back and then snapped. The ball just broken up. And Willie Randolph had full stride going on the pitch as if he really wanted to pull the trigger on it. Must have been a slider because it was just enough to make him miss. You no know, great calls for alarm when Hassler gets behind. That's been his characteristic. A little bit wild, but with good stuff. Now he can come back and make three, four good pitches. Well, it's now three and one. He's one pitch away from loading the bases, and Whitey Herzog is suffering. You think his mind isn't going 100 miles an hour right now? He doesn't want to spin uh, Latell this early either, I don't think. That's high, ball four. Now the bases are loaded with two out. Well, let him pitch to him, I'm sure. Red Stanley is the man. Second straight inning, the Yankees have had the bases low. Last inning, Munson ended it. Hitting at the first pitch. Flying out. And there have been two outs each time the bases have been loaded in this situation, Howard. So it takes a base hit. A base hit may break the ball game open right now. We're not going to see a le another left-handed pitcher right now. We're going to leave Hassler in there. Strike call as he throws the fastball to Stanley. They've got left-handed hitters coming up again. Mickey Rivers, and of course, it doesn't make any difference if you make a change because behind him, you've got Roy White. There's only one more left-handed pitcher out there in the bullpen for the Royals, and that's Steve Mingor. They may need him later on in the ballgame. Strike two to Fred Stanley. So, Hassler now, having trouble with his control, throws two bullets to Fred Stanley and gets him 0-2. The base is full and two out here in the bottom of the fifth inning. He can be wild, and again, he can come back and make some perfect pitches on you. He's got great stuff. Now let me see it. A two-strike pitch. High. There are your Yankees on base. Chris Shambliss is at third base. Oscar Gamble's up at second base. And Willie Randolph's at first. One and two. With two out. Hester pitching to Fred Stanley. High. Ball two. Grabs it to end the inning. So the Yankees leave the bases loaded 
leading the ball game for three. We'll be back with more after this word from our stadium as we move to the top of the sixth inning. The score is 4-3. New York leads Kansas City. Keith Jackson along with Howard Cosell and Reggie Jackson. There's the line total in the ball game so far. The line score. You can see the Yankees about hit Kansas City, but the Royals still within reach. And here is young Tom Poquette to lead off. Point to be made is that the Yankees have seven hits, four bases on balls. They have left eight men on base. This game, certainly up to this point, with the Yanks still ahead, resembles the pattern of Sunday night's game. Oquette looks at the pitch from Ed Figueroa. Low ball one. George Brett is on deck, and then will be the cleanup hitter, John Mayberry. And this guy's three. used to leading off innings, hitting 337, leading off innings. Keith, I'm sorry for walking on you. Right? One and one. Why, oh, wind is cold. Winners are coming to you, Howard. You better get a heavier coat. <laughs> Taps it over the mound. Over forward is Randolph. Throws him out. One gone. So Willie makes the defensive play, and now here's Kansas City third baseman George Brett. He has doubled and hit a fly ball to center field. He has scored one run. In this game tonight, the final game of the American League Championship Series. The winner here, tonight goes on to play Cincinnati in the World Series in Cincinnati on Saturday. Big red machine. Figueroa's fastball is high. George Brett said he doesn't look to hit home runs sometimes, but in a situation like this, they're one run down, and he hits Figueroa so well, just maybe. Goes away from him. It's two balls and no strikes. Grant Jackson is in the Yankee bullpen, and Mark Littell in the Kansas City bullpen. An ideal situation. The count is 2-0. Oh. There you see Thurman telling them to keep the ball down. Keep the ball down. Ed Figueroa Sunday night in the second game traveled five and a third innings. And right now that's where he is, five and a third. Will he be swinging three and oh, Keith? Nope. You've got to tell me before <laughs> he throws. <laughs> that's no fair. <laughs> he just wants to get on to give Mayberry a shot and hope for a pitching mistake by Figueroa, as occurred in the first inning. Get up, right center. Rivers on the move. Think he's got it. Covers a lot of ground out there. He does. Great speed. Great speed. Ball hit well. George Brett doesn't hit too many easy balls. He hits them all on the nose. Mickey with three for three leads off next inning for the bottom half of this inning for the Yankees. Having a brilliant night, Rivers. John Mayberry, two-run homer in the first inning. Here's the big guy. And Munson. And Reggie Munson's going out to talk to Figueroa. Very simple. A reminder. There's one way to pitch Mayberry. Don't give him the inside half of the plate. Shift takes effect. Keep the ball away. Preferably, of course, low. All right, now you look at it defensively. You can see out there in the top left of your picture, that's Roy White, the left fielder. He's almost straight away and left, but there's about four acres between him and Mickey Rivers. <laughs> and then you come over to the right fielder, who's uh, straight away and right. The infield, the shortstop, is on the second base side of uh, second base. The third baseman Nettles is up at the normal shortstop position and Figueroa is high on the first pitch to Mayberry. It's ball one. That one is also high, high again, Keith. Here's a situation here. He's got to be careful with Mayberry. It's four to three and the right field porch is right on his left shoulder, really. Just a little blooper can get over the right field wall here. And you see Big John gritting his teeth and grinding it out. He can't be swinging for a little blooper or going to left field. He's got to go for the marble. And he, he got low there. And John has got to do it. Was hoist. We have just had another balloon removed. I was talking to Charlie Lyle about how far John appears to be standing away. And Charlie said, well, last year he hit a ton. 
stepping forcefully into the pitch and has a shot going toward the corner it is off the wall good play by Gambo as he holds into a single he hit it so hard that all Oscar had to do was turn around and play the ricochet well, you see the expression of Mayberry. Nice play by Oscar Gamble off the wall. An outstanding throw. This ball's hit so hard. Fastball inside. Hit it hard enough to be a home run, but he didn't get it up enough. Off the 310 sign and a good play by Oscar. Holding Big John to a single. Well, you know how bright, how astute Billy Martin is. He took cognizance of that. Figueroa couldn't pitch Mayberry the way he was supposed to. Hal McCray, a little tap out in front of the plate. Figueroa up, throws, gets him. So Hal McCray, an excuse me swing, taps back to the pitcher. And so we've gone through five and a half, and the Yankees still lead the Royals 4-3. We've got Mickey Rivers coming up. Now, Reggie... I talked about the owner, George Steinbrenner, earlier, talking with Mickey Rivers last night. Let me tell you something about Steinbrenner. He's brought a lot of color, a lot of flamboyancy. His aim isn't to tell Rivers how to play. It's to motivate the man. And I think he succeeded. Whatever he did, he's three for three in the ball game. He scored two times. And he punched it out in front. <laughs> no he did it. No contest. Mickey Rivers right there did not make a good punt. He got the ball down right out in front of the catcher, right out in front of the pitcher, but he's so fast. A running start. One of the fastest men in baseball. They don't ask how. Beware, big red machine. The man can fly. That equals, incidentally, <laughs> a, an American League championship, in fact, a championship series record for most hits in a single game. You think I made Pete Rose and Joe Morgan right it, now? Yeah. Get up out of their chair? I guess the record is five, so Rivers now with four in a row is one away from the record. Meanwhile, he's had eight hits in the series. And 22 at-bats, and we've got a ball one count. And here's where all the things Reggie has talked about in terms of what Mickey Rivers does to unsettle the opposition. All those things now come into play, into focus. Roy White, the hitter for New York. White and Rivers have scored all of New York's runs. Watch the ball. Good bot. Mayberry on the play. Rojas covers it first. They get Roy White. Mickey Rivers is at second base on the sacrifice. Roy remains one for one on the day. Single in the first, two bases on balls, and now the sacrifice. What out? Billy Martin has had enough. He wants a run, and he wants it now. Well, he's played good baseball right there. He advanced the runner. Roy White doing a job. And now they've got to contend with the big guy, Thurman Munson. They'll probably pitch around him or pitch to him tough. They may even go on and give him an intentional pass and make Chris Chambliss drive the run in instead of Munson. Well, Galen Sisko has come to the mound to talk with Andy Hassler and Buck Martinez. And... They're making their decision right now, and you can see that Andy is in full agreement whatever the coach is saying. Mark Littell and Steve Mingori. Mingori is the left-hander. Baby daughter born to the Mingori's yesterday. Steve saw a picture of her first time today. And there's the country boy, Littell, number 17. Herman Munson at the plate. You've got one out. Rivers at second. I don't think I've ever seen a manager get more out of his roster than Whitey Herzog has gotten out of his in this series, Reggie. He's been a brilliant manager. Uh, great job overcoming the injuries. I don't think they're going to pitch to Munson. They're going to pitch around him. If, he's, if, if he hits, he's going to have to hit a bad pitch. They pitched to him. They're crazy. Well, they just zipped the fastball over the inside corner for a strike. I 91 miles an hour on that pitch. He's not making that 150,000 miles to nothing. Is that what Thurman's making? I mean, if he ain't, he's spitting on it. <laughs> <laughs> You're with it, man. <laughs> Rivers off second base. Hits it to right. Base hit. There comes your insurance run around third base. Munson digging for second. He's out. Thurman Munson trying to go to second. 
He is thrown out by Hal McRae, but Nicky Rivers scored from second base and the Yankees lead it five to three. I say to yourself, why watch this TV game sitting at home? Why did Thurman Munson go after that? Why did he try to stretch it into a double? There you see him going with the pitch as he's done so well all year long. He's done the last couple of years driving in 105 runs. If he's on second base with one out, they don't have to waste time or waste another out getting him over to second base. It's a good play to try to get over to second base right there, and it takes a perfect play, a perfect throw to get him. Thurman nice came back to the dugout, Thurman. though, and he said, uh, who said uh, McCray couldn't throw out of that right field <laughs> corner? He shot him down. All right, Keith. Thurman Howard Munson said. has just connected his 10th hit of the series. Howard said he couldn't throw. <laughs> <laughs> Now you were right, they were crazy to pitch them. Look at Mickey go. Got the go sign from Dick Hauser, never looked. Just checked his coach and came on in. Two out now, the bases are empty for Chris Shamblitz as the Yankees build the lead to 5-3 here in the bottom of the sixth inning. Andy Hessler being pummeled a little bit by the Yankees here. Munson 10 out of 22 on the series a new record in total hits in a championship series. Sorry about that Pete Rose. Hi. Petey doesn't mind. He just wants to win. He's throwing things around his house right now. <laughs> no he's, <laughs> he's he's in Johnny Bench's restaurant. <laughs> Better not be throwing around the house. Carol will get after him. There's a strike two and one to Shambles. Up the middle. A little leader in the center field for Shambliss. And so now the Yankees are really jumping on Hessler. And he's got 10 base hits. That's right. And he continues to chew up left-handers. That guy a pirate? Now with Shambliss on first base. Reggie. No movement in the Kansas City dugout, though Murray Herzog and Cisco have talked again, and quite his pacing. Reggie Chambliss is 10 out of 20, 500 on the series. That's what you call scalding the ball. And seven RBIs on the series. Now, who's the most right now? That's why there's some question on this ball club as to who is the most valuable player. Both of these fellas, Thurman Munson, along with Chris Chambliss, along with Mickey Rivers, That's right. have exemplified or showed you the reasons why they are being considered all in the running for the Most Valuable Player Award. Who do you give it to? Carlos May takes high, ball one. From They've Nestle. all been outstanding. Whom do you give it to? I don't want to get in it. He <laughs> raised the question. Fouled away, it's one and one on Carlos May. Yankees leading 5-3 in the ball game and hitting in the bottom of the sixth inning. For a little more undecidedness, Howard, let's throw in Greg Nettles with 32 home runs. 1-1 one, one pitch, there goes Shimba, swung on a miss, throw to second base. See. Look at the big man move it. He didn't have a particularly big lead. He just simply took off and made it. Good slide. Made away slide. Now with two out, Shambliss out at second. The base hit could score him. Carlos May up there as you see the replay looking in from center field. And it's one and two on the batter May. Little tap, George Brett charging at third base. Throws in the dirt. Everybody can't handle it. Here comes Chambliss. That's a big run. run. That's the biggest run of the ball game right there. It gives him a three-run lead. Right. And it now takes four runs for them to get beat. So that's suddenly, the biggest run of the ball game. That's right. Suddenly the Yankees have totally capitalized. Billy Martin and his people using the running game that served them so well. Let's take another look. Little tapper by Lee May. 
Uh, Carlos May, forgive me. I was certainly with Reggie Jackson's club. And John couldn't hold on to the ball. Thrown into the dirt. Error on the third baseman. The third throwing error on George Brett. In this series. Now it is a 6-3 to three ball game. And we've got time called. As the umpires and the ground crew and everybody out there has to take a moment to help clean things up again. So George Brett charging that little temper at third base could not get the throw on the money. Mayberry, who is as skilled as anybody in digging him out, could not come up with that one cleanly. And Chris Campus running on the tap came in to score. Tough play right there for George. He hurt himself a little bit. Didn't have to quite hurry that much because he had looked, it appeared as though he had plenty of time. Make an error like that. George knows what he's done. I believe it'll just make him a better hitter the next time he comes to the plate. Well, the uh, Royals are going to need a little hitting because they're now down by three. Howard, you know I'm not going to talk bad about my ball players. <laughs> <laughs> You're making that apparent. <laughs> Asler delivers to Greg Nettles with Carlos May on first base and two out and he misses ball one. It runs through your mind make a mistake like that. You know you want to try to make up for it. Carlos is called off the bases and uh, obviously we're going to get a runner. Sandy Alomar goes out to run for Carlos May. He's using his entire roster tonight. He wondered where some of them were, but now he's coming through and starting to show you where they are, I guess. That probably means we'll see Lou Pinella going up as the designated, designated hitter. Get an idea what the top of the Yankee batting order has done tonight. 16 appearances for them. They've been on base 13 times. Rivers on base four times. White on base three out of four times. Munson on base three out of four times. And Chambliss on base three out of four times. So the top of the order has uh, really done something. Well, I have to be careful right now with Greg Nettles because if Greg can unload one right now, then it'll be hallelujah. See you at the pass. Meet you in Cincinnati. Andy Hessler still out there. Thurman Munson said to me tonight, Regardless of the outcome, I live in Canton, so I'm going to Cincinnati no matter what happens. <laughs> Those four men, Keith, that you just named, by the way, have ten hits tonight. Here goes Alomar. Throw! Got him! The inning is over, but it is a big inning for the Yankees as they score two and now enjoy a three-run cushion after six innings of play. The Yankees six and the Royals three. Anderson, whom do you want to face? I don't care which one we play. I think they're both outstanding ball clubs. But to be in the World Series, I wouldn't mind if we played the Nankai Hawks over in Japan. You looking? At Jamie Quirk, the designated hitter for Kansas City, to lead off the top of the seventh inning. Then Cookie Rojas, Red Patek, Buck Martinez would be the fourth hitter. Jamie Quirk in the ball game. Fly ball to left. Grounded out to short. He's 0 for 2. The Yankees lead 6 3, Kansas City. Now get down to Casey. They better come up with some offense against Ed Figueroa if they have any hopes at all. The Yankee bullpen is now very active with Grant Jackson and Dick Tidrow throwing. Martin won't waste a moment. The slightest sign of faltering. Out will come Figueroa. Two and one. Strike call. I think we got to give Billy Martin a little bit of credit. He certainly has gotten stuck with Figueroa. He stuck to his guns all along and up to this point. Gotta give him a, pretty good. Got to give him a lot of credit. It's three and one as Ed's high. Talk.
talk about the fiery, feisty Billy Martin. He's shown me a lot of class the last couple of days. Hard shot. Jimmis fails it at first base. Chris Jimmis leaving his feet. Pulls it down. Watch the quickness of the big guy at first. No chance for indecision. Bang, bang. Stick your glove up and hope it's there. And hope it doesn't rip your head off. Looked into his glove to make sure. I don't believe it. See it to believe. Otherwise, it could have been two. For Kirk. Cookie Rojas takes her. Strike one. Figueroa is moving along quite easy right now. Set in a nice pattern. He's got everything going for him. Two. There's the Yankee bullpen. Right-hander Tidrow, left-hander Jackson. Got the momentum going. Got the crowd on his side. Just scored a couple. Just scored a couple of runs. Sailing along. Who can wreck the ship? Popped up. Back of the plate. Munson coming. Can't make the play. Slides up against the backstop. Be careful, Herman. They might need you in Cincinnati. Are you giving it to them, Keith? I said you might. Giving it to I them, said Keith? might. Might always slip in that little qualifying adjective. <laughs> Telegrams from Kansas City. You, though, however, would certainly hate to see a premier performer like that get injured at this juncture of the season, wouldn't you? I know the feeling. Yeah, I'm sure she'll do. Two strikes now on Cookie Rojas. Low. One and two. Settle into a nice pattern. Eddie Figueroa keeping the ball away. Moving the ball around the strike zone. In when he has to. Away when he has to. Just outside. Knows he can give it all he's got right now. He's gotten him to the seventh inning. And he's got relief in the bullpen. Yeah. Now we've got a 2-2 count on Cookie. He is really something special, this fellow. 37 years of age, 15 years in the big leagues. Hits the ball on the ground of the shortstop, Stanley. Red has it. Throws him out. Two down, and Saturday afternoon at 3.30, over most of these ABC stations, NCAA college football. It'll be Alabama and Tennessee from Knoxville at 3.30 p.m., and that is one of the wars during the football season down south. You talk about giving a manager credit and about Billy Martin, Reggie. He's the kind of guy, as I've said, who'll take the blows and do it his way. Two down now, and Freddie Patek hits a foul off the right side. He met with his coaches. He knew everybody was saying, big ballpark, look at the competitive record in championship games, pitch Ken Holtzman, and this game is far from over. But that fellow right there, in discussions with his coaches, they said, Figueroa, he's won 19 for us. Billy went with him. And if he gets knocked out now, he has done his part of the bargain. Figueroa has produced. So Martin has proved out. He has yielded two singles in the last 16 batters for Kansas City. One and one count to the Royals shortstop. Now one and two, but it takes a strike. Matter of fact, Reggie, he looks sharper now against the right-handed batters than he's looked all game. He looks sharp right now. He's got his, got his adrenaline flowing, and you can feel you can sense it in Yankee Stadium right now. The crowd getting a little anxious, and the people in New York, of course, anticipating all the time. Hard shot, third base, Nettles knocks it down. Stanley picks it up and throws, though. Got it! How about that? Close, close play. Did they get it? No, nope, didn't. I was, I was fooled by the call of the umpire, too. He, he, he called safe with his fist. Yeah, when you double up the fist, Bill, that means you're out. Have a look at it. It's a great comeback by... Freddie Stanley right over there where he should be gets off a great throw but this man can run and there you see it looks like he's given the outside he did didn't it it'll be a base hit sharply hit by Freddie Patek so this crappy little guy he's just absolutely been marvelous for the Kansas City Royals he is the leader he's the guy that takes them and shakes them and moves them around Patek off he might go pitches inside 
Give him just a little bit of room as Buck Martinez is up there and two for two in this ball game. All these at bats right now are what you can call throwaways. No deposit, no return. Said it before and I'll say it again. There's no tomorrow. Cash in your coupon, boys. Hi to Martinez and Figueroa asks for another baseball. It's two balls and no strikes with Freddie Patek on first base. Waiting in the on-deck circle, Al Cowens. There's Patek. Remind you again that Tidro is heating in the bullpen, and so is Grant Jackson. The crowd here is getting a little anxious, a little anticipation. Don't count the Royals down. They've proved before that their men and pros can be pros. Ball players don't give up. They never give up. Three balls and no strikes now to Buck Martinez. That's why they tell you when you've got another team down, just try to bury him. Keep going. There's a strike. Don't let up. Not in the bigs. There's Tidrow, the right-hander. Jackson, the left-hander. Patek edging off first. By two balls. Crowd is chanting in case you want to find the rumble in the background. They're chanting Eddie, Eddie. Got to, got to go after it. Buck is trying to take food off of your table, Ed. There goes Pontec. Ball hit to left field. Roy White has a play. Inning is over. Kansas City, no runs on one hit. They leave one. After six and a half, it's six three Yankees. crowd looks like they're almost prepared for snow or it might be a football crowd but it's not it's the final game of the American League Championship Series the winner of the game tonight goes on against Cincinnati in the World Series and the Yankees now are leading by a score of six to three going into the bottom of the seventh inning and the line score you see New York six runs on ten hits and an error Kansas City three runs seven hits and an error. And Kansas City scored twice in the first inning, once in the second. New York getting two in the first, two in the third, and two in the sixth. And here is Greg Nettles to lead off for the Yankees to be followed by Oscar Gamble. And then we'll get Willie Randolph. And Andy Hassler is still the man. He is the fourth Kansas City pitcher. And the first one to Nettles is inside ball one. I'm sure the old American League home run champ here just like to dial eight like they do in a hotel for long distance. Just one more time for good measure. Outside ball two. Nettles is the only Yankee not to reach first base tonight. He's trying to reach the seats. <laughs> I suspect he might be right. <laughs> trying to go long distance. Anywhere, station to station, not person to person. Three balls and no strikes now as we our director Chet Forty stayed close to give you a look at Greg Nettle's face as he took ball three. Now Hester comes with ball four. Ball gets away from Buck Martinez. Nettle hustles to first, turns, but Buck holds him. Ball four. Latell now is uh, active again in that Kansas City bullpen. Now reached the point where they can uh, they can call on it. And probably will if Andy Hassler gets in any kind of trouble here. Especially right now, since he's got two right handed hitters coming up next. The Yankees have already used Carlos Mann. Of course, Oscar Gamble, he can get out of the way now. So if he loses Oscar Gamble, I'm sure we'll see Littell to face Randolph and Stanley. But Martinez to throw and gets Gamble on the sacrifice as they move Nettles to second. Now with one out, have the man in scoring position for Willie Randolph. And here comes Littell, as expected. 
first five and a half innings of this ball game, it was a squeaker. The Yankees four, the Royals three. The Yankees leaving a ton of men on base, relatively speaking, and the game bore similar proportions to last Sunday night's game. But it didn't turn out that way, or at least it hasn't up to this point because suddenly the Yankees erupted for two runs in the bottom of the sixth inning, and now Martin seeks more insurance using a good sacrifice bunt by Oscar Gamble. Andy Hasper leaves, sits down in the dugout, and Mark Littell is coming in. Hard-throwing right-hander who did not allow an earned run in 46 of his 59 relief appearances in 1976 for the Kansas City Royals. Reds, did you bat against Littell? Yes, I faced him a couple times during the season, Howard. He's a hard thrower. He comes right at you. Fastball slider. Has a change up, but he doesn't throw it very much. So we've got a timeout here at Yankee Stadium as we get the new pitcher, Mark Littell, and we'll be right back. All right, George Foster, whom do you want to face in the series? Well, I'd rather play the New York Yankees more so than playing the Kansas City Royals, mainly because we're financially, I think we'd be in a better position by playing the New York Yankees. And also, there are a lot of memories in that ballpark of the players like Dave Ruth, Lou Gehrig, you know, have played there. So Mark Littell, the hard-throwing right-hander, comes on now. He is the fifth Kansas City pitcher in the ball game. He relieves Andy Hasler. Hasler responsible for... Nettles, who's leading off second base. Willie Randolph, the batter, with one out. Yankees leading 6-3, trying to get four here in the bottom of the seventh inning. Mattel's fastball is inside. Half toward short. Batek throws. And gets Randolph as Nettles goes to third with two out. This job, he comes in there. You see Greg Nettles getting a little whisper from Dick Hauser. He comes into the game, Mark Littell does, knowing that he cannot afford to give up another run. If he does, the psychological advantage could be get completely out of hand for the Kansas City Royals right now. So he's got a job to do, Mark Littell does, for his ball club. And there's Fred Stanley. Nettles off third, Stanley the batter, Littell with two out. And Gorey is in the Kansas City pen right now, staying warm. And the pitch just inside ball one. There's the left-hander, Mangori, Steve Mangori. Macy's ball ball. You know that Whitey Herzog now is going to use everybody. He thinks that might have a chance to produce some runs. Kansas City needs three to tie. Ball is hit to the right side, and McCray coming in a hurry, makes the catch on the run. So Hell makes the catch in right field. The Yankees threaten, but don't score. After seven, it's 6-3 Yankees, and we'll be back with more baseball after this word from our local state. As we look down on Yankee Stadium from our picture aboard the ABC helicopter, here's the story of the ball game. As Kansas City comes up at the top of the eighth inning, Yankees six runs, ten hits, and one error. Kansas City three runs, seven hits, and one error. Ed Figueroa, the starter, he's gone all the way, and he now will face the top of the order for Kansas City. Al Cowens, Tom Coquette, and George Brett. Cowens, Coquette, Musk start getting on base. Kansas City is to have a chance in this ball game. And the first pitch from Figueroa to Cowens is high and tight. Well, you can see Cowens hasn't done a heck of a lot since he got that hit. I guess you could say a day or so ago, but he's got to get something going to get Kansas City back in this ball game. Foul on the screen. Need a base runner. Figueroa says no. A little change of baseball. You know, the other day I mentioned why sometimes they change baseballs. Sometimes the ball might be a little bit bigger than the other. It might not feel right to the pitcher. Consequently, he's got the option to change baseballs. Sometimes you might not, you might find one that doesn't have the stitches up or down or close. Hard shot left field base hit for Cowan. 
And Roy White gets it back in in a hurry. And now there it is. Steve Burroughs, the first base coach for Kansas City, has somebody to work with, and Billy Martin is on the way to the mound, and you might very well, in fact, you're going to get a pitching change right here. Jackson and Kidrow are out of the bullpen, both heated up, and apparently Billy wants the left-hander, Jackson. Well, as I said earlier, he's done his job, Figueroa. Crowd stands, gives Figueroa some ovation. When they were screaming Eddie, Eddie, Eddie before in unison, the origin of that cry relates to a former New York Ranger goalie, Eddie Jacob, whom the fans at Madison Square Garden love. The Rangers traded him away to Detroit. When Eddie came back, the arena resounded all night with the cry of Eddie, Eddie, Eddie. They transplanted it here to Eddie Figueroa. And so Grant Jackson is now on his way in to relieve Eddie Figueroa here in the top of the eighth inning, and we'll be... Kind of a strong bullpen. Billy Martin returns to the dugout now, having put Grant Jackson, veteran left-hander, into the ball game in relief of Eddie Figueroa. Figueroa traveling seven complete innings. Jackson on the season, seven and one. He'll be facing a pinch hitter for Kansas City. Jim Wolford summoned. He will hit for Poquette. He's a right-handed batter, and he's one for one in the only appearance against Grant Jackson this year. Wolford, a 249 hitter. Moon looking like a piece of green cheese out there. <laughs> <laughs> Keith, you play Wolford straight away. He goes with the pitch most of the time. You don't like to give him the right field line because he's good hitting down there. He's always ready and looking for the fastball, especially with two strikes. The book on him is to throw sliders just off the plate and down. Al Cowens led off for Kansas City, number 18, standing right there. Number 14 is Steve Burrows, the first base coach for Kansas City. Chuck Hiller is waiting over at third, on a little piece of the action himself, the third base coach. In a situation where you have some scouting reports, they say the book on him is to throw him sliders down and in. Grant Jackson's a power pitcher, doesn't have a real good slider. He's got a three-run lead to work with, and I'm sure he'll go right after Jimmy Wolf, but especially since he's got that great big left field, I guess you can call it Yellowstone Park working for him here. I think you're right. Throws it on the inside corner and gets a call strike. Not That's fancy. He just charges. Collins off first. That one's high. It's one and one. On deck, George Brett. It's one and two. Billy Martin going for Grant Jackson. Because That's he knows the power men coming up to Kansas City are from the left side, obviously. He wants Jackson to work against Brett and Mayberry. Bickering. And Jackson is at least the equal of Wolford. Wolford fouls it back one, two. Last two pitches are according to the book, Ridge. Tailing away to the outside and down. One fast ball away, and the other one was a, was a ball that was down. It was a breaking ball, kind of out of characteristic for Grant. But uh, you never know what situation. There's the story on Grant Jackson's career versus the Kansas City Royals. The Royals have been in existence for the eight seasons. Here they are fighting with the Yankees for the American League pennant. That pitch is just high, 2-2. Two two. That one's high. It's 1-1. One and one. On deck, George Brett. Swing and a miss. It's one and two. Billy Martin going for Grant Jackson. Because That's he knows the power men coming up to Kansas City are from the left side, obviously. He wants Jackson to work against Brett and Mayberry. Bickering. Jackson is at least the equal of Wolford. Wolford fouls it back one, two. Last two pitches are according to the book, Ridge. Tailing away to the outside and down. One fast ball away, and the other one was a, was a ball that was down. It was a breaking ball, kind of out of characteristic for Grant. But uh, you never know what situation. There's the story on Grant Jackson's career versus the Kansas City Royals. The Royals have been in existence for the eight seasons. Here they are fighting with the Yankees for the American Lake credit. That pitch is just high, 2-2. Two 
It's the Royals' dream to duplicate the miracle of the Mets, who in their eighth year won everything in 1969 as they astonished everybody by beating the Birds of Baltimore in the World Series in five games. Just low. Now it is three and two. There'll be no tricks now. He's missed with two sliders. He missed with a fastball. He tried to go down with it. It's fastball all the way right now. Power against power. Here we go. Oh, a little bleeder hit out of the short center field. Rivers coming, no play. Oh, Cowan's delayed on it. They almost came up with a play at second base. Well, Rivers him. might have had a chance with it, Keith. So now you have nobody out, and you have the tying run coming to play. Now watch Cowan's. He had to hold up because of Mickey Rivers' speed out there in center. And then he realized that Rivers couldn't get to it. And if they had really gone quickly for the throw they might have had a play at second base but they did not that's the important thing and now George Brett the American League batting champion is at the plate representing the tying run in the ball game at second base Al Cowens at first base Jim Wolfram now here is George Brett talked to George yesterday and he said he doesn't try to go for home runs unless the situation warrants it. He represents a tie and run. Brad Jackson's fastball is high and tight. There's no quit in this team and George Brett, the best hitter in the American League, has hit 362 with men on base throughout the year 1976. You couldn't have a better man up. High there drive. Hit to right field. Home run. It's gone. There it is. The ball game is tied. Certain situations, like he said, he doesn't like to look for pitches because it takes away from his greatest asset of just hitting the ball hard in particular spots. But there he is. I said it earlier, he made an error. What did I say? I'm no gospel, but I think I know athletes. It'll make him a better hitter when he comes back to the plate. Take a look at the little short porch over there. George Brett. You might not be a scientific hitter, George, but you can do it. And obviously he gets a roaring welcome into the Royals dugout. And, and you can oh, hear the quiet of this crowd. Big John Mayberry. Here's Mayberry now. Jackson throws it over his head. They're all even in runs and all even in hits. And even, even in errors in this ball game. Atmosphere changes. Out That's quickly. Quiet. All of a sudden, didn't it? On the corner. Make note that we're all standing up right now. <laughs> <laughs> note this. There's no excitement in George Brett's face. He's concentrating, Howard. Uh, uh, now there's, there's a, a little, little joy. He feels a great deal of jubilation. He knows that he made a bad play the last time. Uncharacteristic of him, Billy Martin. Got lots and lots of things on his mind. Uncharacteristic of George Brett. He's made a couple errors in this series, but he's come back like a true pro, like a champion has. Mayberry pops it up. It'll be out of play as Munson lets it go. He has a look. That is the second home run of the ball game for Kansas City. Mayberry had a two-run shot in the first inning, and Greta three-run shot here in the top of the eighth inning to get the Royals even at six. Not one-sided, Howard. I'm just telling it like it That's is. That's the way to go, Reggie. Inside to Mayberry. It's two and two to John. Martin played every percentage. He came in with a left-hander. George Brett can hit anybody. Wow. You got to get that one down. You got to get that one down because the next run just might be worth $20,000 to the team that gets it. In Kansas City, there is jubilation right now, and why not? What a bunch of young ball players. Hold to the right side and over to make the play. In the exaggerated defensive shift against Mayberry, Randolph throws him out. Now you've got one way. Kansas City with two home runs tonight indicates they're coming out perhaps of the slump that has plagued them. They had had hit only three home runs in their previous 37 games, including the championship series. And they've gone bang, bang tonight. And here's Hal McRae playing right field. Outside from Grant Jackson. Well, we'll see the resiliency of Grant Jackson. We'll see the resiliency of the Yankees. 
Two balls and no strikes to Hal McRae with one out and the bases are clean thanks to the three run home run by George Brett. Three balls and no strikes. Stage is getting to be set for somebody to be a hero. Billy Martin on the steps of the dugout. Sparky Lyle and Dick Titrow are active in the Yankee bullpen. Ball is hit to left. Roy White drifts back and makes the catch. Make note that he let him swing away 3-0. Right. Something you don't normally do in a ballpark like this because it's not easy to reach the wall. That is true, but as I've said before, there are many similarities between Herzog and Martin. In a sense, they've grown up in the same baseball way and they play that kind of venturesome baseball. Both drive the same car. They both had on cashmere sweaters today. Did they? Yeah. Similarities. Jamie Quirk at the plate. Strike ball. A designated hitter. Swing and a miss as Jamie went for that fastball and did get it. Trying to dial eight. Long distance. Yep. Tripled yesterday. Inside. Ball and two strikes. Just a waste pitch right there. And I'm sure he'll try to keep the ball away from Jamie. Because again, if that ever presence of the right field fence, ooh, would Cincinnati like to look at that? Look it up. Well, it was a big beginning for the Kansas City Royals. A three run home run by George Brett. And after seven and a half, we're all even at 6-6. Six, six. <laughs> There it is, Kansas City, six, ten runs an error. New York, six, ten runs an error. And we go down to the bottom of the eighth inning for the New York Yankees. Incidentally, Ed Figueroa charged uh, with four of those six Kansas City runs. And now for the Yankees, it is the top of the order, which has been particularly troublesome. Mickey Rivers, a triple. And three singles. He has scored three times. He'll be followed by Roy White and then Thurman Munson. And Mark Littell out on the mound for Kansas City. Mickey Rivers, we've said it before, the catalyst of the offense. Four hits already. He supplied half of the runs, half the offense. Got a chance for five hits. And Littell, fastball, misses, ball one. Last guy to get five hits, a teammate of mine, Paul Blair, against the Minnesota Twins in 1969. Five for five. Five. Ball two. Under any circumstances, we come to a tie situation in the eighth inning where Herzog has the very man in there that he would most want. A power pitch. Big, strong, and unafraid. Martin has done everything right. It didn't work for him. Strike. Good one. Stayed with Figueroa, got the most out of him, came in with a southpaw pitcher, has been his best pitcher on the team during the fading weeks of the season. Put him against a left-handed hitter. High fly ball, hit to right center. McCray goes over, makes the catch. George Brett is, uh, I don't know what kind of hitter he is. He's just a good one. I don't know if he's left-handed or right-handed because he shows no signs of giving in to anybody. Right. He has... I don't think he's had a bad out in the five games we've had up to this point. He's got a chance. He might have a future in this game. Roy White. Great now. play. Switch hitter for New York. With one out. Base is empty. Game all even at 6-6. Let's make note of the fact Roy White now a right-handed hitter. He becomes a 320 hitter. He's hit 12 of his 14 home runs left-handed. Right here in Yankee Stadium with the short porch. He becomes a threat. He's one for two against Littell this season. Bill Haller, right field umpire, going out to clean something off the field. A lot of debris floating around tonight. And getting a hold of some of the confetti. Here it is. To White. Shot at Mayberry. Good play by John. And Roy White's out. Hit it hard. Excellent play. 
had a little trouble getting a handle on it, but he kept his body in front of it just in case he would have had a problem with it. So very quickly, you've got two down for Thurman Munson. Watch this play as Mayberry gets in front of it, gets his man. Get right hot, down the line. Hot potato. So quickly, Littell has two out. And you can still feel the sense of momentum of the Royals with that three-run outburst in the eighth inning. Thurman Munson. Single. Three times tonight. Swings and misses. Thurman wants to see the baseball. I saw him times I always wonder. The pitcher has the option to change the ball anytime he wants to. The batter can only look at it. If the umpire says it's out, it's out. If not, it's back to the pitcher. A little fairness in this game, huh? <laughs> Thurman Munson has delivered two runs, knocked across two tonight for New York. Kansas City riding home run power from John Mayberry and George Brett into a 6 6 tie. Whitey Herzog watching from the dugout. With two out, nobody on. Swing and a miss, strike two. Goes right after you. Now I'm quite sure he'll try and make a pitch. No balls and two strikes. He doesn't want to give Thurman anything that'll cost him the American League pennant. Just missed. Yes. <laughs> yes, it did. He tried to make a pitch on it. This kid tries to pitch low to everybody. Hard slider. Good fastball done some job. Great ratio of hits against innings pitch, Reggie. You see him back off the mound before he can go to his mouth. You're not allowed to go to your mouth when you're in the dirt on the pitcher's mound. Hudson fouls it out of play. Straight back. If you do, it's an automatic ball. Very hard to hit home runs against Mark Littell. Takes his time. Whole night. I can see why he wants to warm up the fingers a little. There's sometimes when they'll let you blow on your hand on a cold night like this. But he's stepping off the mound because he's wetting his fingers, which you're not allowed to do. One and two pitch to Munson. Struck him out. So Littell does his thing here in the bottom of the eighth inning. And after eight complete innings of play, we're stretching this one to the limit. Kansas City six, New York six. 6-6 six, six tie as Kansas City will come to the plate in the top of the ninth inning. And on the mound for the New York Yankees, their third pitcher, Dick Tedrow. Tedrow in 1976 started the season as a relief pitcher. Sparky was the primary left-hander and Dick the right-hander. In the second half of the season, Tedrow recorded six saves in his last ten appearances. So he has pitched very effectively for the New York Yankees in the latter part of the season. Now, Reggie Jackson, you face this big guy. Tell us about him. Let me get my newspaper so I can read up on it. <laughs> <laughs> big six foot four inch guy, Dick Tidrow from California, from Hayward. Used to be a starter, was was, was with Cleveland, got traded over here to the Yankees in one of the big trades. It brought Chris Chambliss over here. What did you hit against this guy? He's a power pitcher, Howard. Fastball, slider, occasional changeup, not too much. He'll turn the ball over. When I say turn the ball over, change the rotation on the ball, try to get a little bit more movement. But basically a power pitcher. He'll throw as hard as he can for as long as he can and then wait for Sparky Lyle to come in. How, uh, how many times did you go to bat against him? Oh, I've faced him quite a few times. He's been around ever since about 1971 and 1969. Had decent success with Dick. I hit a couple of home runs off him early in my career. But now I'm running a little streak on him right now with about four or five strikeouts in a row. Really? You have 281 career home runs. Do you remember every homer and every opposition pitcher? Howard, I guess that's my bread and butter. As I say, uh, home run hitters drive Cadillacs or whatever you want to say, or Pontiacs. But... I remember every one of them, and I can tell you the pitcher and the pitch. Keep. All right, Cookie Rojas to lead it off for Kansas City at the top of the ninth. Freddy Patek and Buck Martinez. And Cookie hits a hard one bouncer to Fred Stanley. And he's out. 
got a situation right now where every hitter that comes to the plate, there's Fred Stanley after making a fine play. Every hitter that comes to the plate, at least this is the way it was when we played, when I played in the playoffs, you've got to produce now. You don't want to foul your pitch off. You want to try to get it. And when you do get it, you want to try to capitalize on it because you know there's no tomorrow. Say it again, say it again, but it has great deal of meaning. Here's the little guy, Freddie Patek. Kansas City shortstop, and he looks at low, ball one. 162 games, then four more, then the final game. Down now to the ninth inning, and still all even. On the corner, right one. Get a shot at close up at their faces. They're concentrating all they can right now, pulling out every stop, reaching down as far as they possibly go. You'll see the best baseball they can produce right now. Patek two for three against Tidrow this season. Swings and fouls this one off. Waiting on deck, Buck Martinez. Sparky Lyle and Doyle Alexander are throwing now in the New York bullpen. One out. Nobody on. There, Alexander, the right-hander. Lyle, the left-hander. Alexander to... Make his first appearance if he should get a call. We've not seen him in the series. Lyle has made one appearance. One and two to Patek. Foul. And we need a new piece of lumber. Broke the bat. Took that breaking pitch right in on the hands. A hard slider. I remember Raleigh Finger said one time, I wouldn't mind seeing him take all the marbles, put all the money out, just play one game opening day and whoever wins you're the champion that's what we've got here tonight we've got to have one inning and see who the champion is could have a lot of fat ball players right could have a lot of innings <laughs> <laughs> one and two to Freddie Patek Dick Tittrell third New York pitcher and now Patek out time call Art French behind the plate calling the balls and strikes come this far, go this long, get to this point in the decisive game, and the pressure is enormous on everybody. There's a real Yankee fan right there. One and two. Fouled off. Patek hangs in. Munson is shaken up with that one. He's hurt. Looks like it hit him just under throat. the mask. Adam's apple. Oh, that really hurts. Hazards of catching. Hit on the shoulder, hit on the hands. You take a look at any catcher's hands. His fingers, have, half of them have been broken. Bruises on his shins. Let's look at it from the center field camera. Yep. Adam Zappo. no real way to measure the velocity of a fastball thrown in there and then nipped by the bat. It just increases ouch. the velocity. Ouch, ouch, ouch. At this stage of the game, if he had a broken hand, he'd see it through, knowing Thurman Munson as no I do. No question about it. The situation here, I had a guy I played with all year long, just with relish, Keith. Getting the situation, we went into Baltimore, went into Oakland one time, and I said to Lee May, I said, Lee, the grass is high here worry about getting base hits he said Jack where I'm trying to go the grass don't grow <laughs> I said well why don't you hit the ball to right field sometime and try to get a base hit bloop on in once in a while he said Jack for the last 10 years I've been making a pretty good living going over that way he said I'm not going to change now I'm sure we'll be seeing a lot of the guys trying to hit one out now all right but probably not Fred Patek one and two to the little Kansas City shortstop with one out, nobody on. And it's outside. It's two and two. The game now, three hours and one minute along. Two two, the Patek. Spank toward the hole, Stanley. Over. Long throw. Good play. Good play. They're all good right now. They're all tough right now. 
You know how easy it becomes to fumble one in situations like that one. No question about it. There's dollar signs and championship rings and diamonds all around that ball every time it bounces now. Stanley moved quickly to his right, scooped it up sure-handedly, made the long throw, never wavered for an instant. Professional play. Two out. Batter is Buck Martinez for our local station. Your break is coming right after this half inning. Here's the pitch, and Buck hits it into left center field. <laughs> he has had some special night, hasn't he? <laughs> Three out of four. So he's on first base. I think Buck would like to make a career playing against the Yankees. <laughs> so Martinez is on first base, and we'll go back to the top of the order. Al Cowens, who fought his way on base in the eighth inning, was sitting there when Brett delivered the big home run. Led off the eighth with a sharp single to left against Ed Figueroa. Eddie was removed. On came Grant Jackson, and then came disaster. A blue pit by Wolford, a three-run home run by George Brett. Potential go-ahead run at first base in Martinez as Al Cowens looks at the pitch from Tithro, and it is low. The score is tied. Royals six and the Yankees six. The Royals getting even on George Brett's three-run home run in the top of the eighth inning. They're now at bat in the top of the ninth. The winner of this game is the American League champion. Cowens looks, it's low again. Two balls and no strikes, and I would have to say that Al Cowens is due. Early singled in the eighth. Catch this, Howard. He's so due, he's wet. I caught it. Tipro watching Martinez on first. Watch the signs again. Pitch misses. Three balls and no strikes with two out. Buck Martinez at first. And Collins ahead of the pitcher, Tidro, three and nothing. Yankee fans here, edgy. The folks in Kansas City, hope. Strike call, three and one. There you see him taking a situation like that. Try to get that runner down in the scoring position. Take one extra pitch. All four. It is. So Buck Martinez goes to second base, Cowens to first base. And now it is Jim Wolford. Wolford, the right hander who came on to hit and replaced Boquette in the lineup, and Billy Martin hustles to the mound. Sparky Lyle and Doyle Alexander. In the Yankee bullpen, if he wants one of them. I don't think he'll take Tidro out. Wolford, by the way, during the season, hit only 208 with runners on base. He did hit 270 with the bases empty throughout the 76 season. Yeah, but he got a single a few minutes ago. He the sure did. Inning. A big blooper. And that set up the Brad home run. No question about it. Billy Martin out of the dugout goes out and says, you got to go after this man if he hit 408, 208, or 108. You don't want to face George Brett because we all know what he can do. No. Here's the big man, George Brett, cranking up in the on deck circle. And Jimmy Wolford wants to remember right now is you know he's going to get a pitch hit, a pitch to hit. Popped up foul on the right side, well back into the crowd. It's one and one. Well, looking back. To that eighth inning blooper of Walton. Remember, it's easy to second guess, but we suggested then that Rivers may have gotten a slow start on the ball. If so, keep playing the ball game. If so, what did you think, Reg? I don't remember. <laughs> one and one. It's inside. Pitching, eh? Jimmy Wolford has all of left center field. Enormous hole. They don't figure, at least Mickey Rivers doesn't, and Bailey Martin does not figure that he'll hold tilt row. 
Gets it toward the shortstop. Third baseman Nettles cuts it off. Flips it over to second. The short play on a oh, very close boy. play. That was bang, bang. Yes, it was. I don't think Cowens liked it. Have a look at it. Watch how close it really was. Little indecision on Nettles' part, too. Watch this. No, not real. Straightened up, could only throw to second. I oh, couldn't tell. Oh, oh, oh. Well, Joe Brinkman standing right there and made the call, so we'll go to the bottom of the ninth inning, tied at 6-6, and we'll be back with more baseball after this word from our locals. Play at second base that ended the top of the ninth inning. Boy, I tell you that. <laughs> Um, 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 uh, hello, y'all in Kansas City. <laughs> Cowens looked disbelievingly at him. All right, we'll go to the bottom of the ninth inning now, and Mark Littell is on the mound. It'll be Chemblis, Sandy Alomar, and Greg Nettles. So it'll be Alomar as the designated hitter, a left-hander. Stage is set for a hero for somebody. Times yeah. like this, <laughs> when I was playing, I was nervous. And I mean as nervous as a long-tailed cat in a room full of rockets. Oh. Why did you use you the mask tank? Back then when I was playing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it's Chris Chambliss now who steps up and the crowd comes alive here. And I'm sure a lot of folks holding their breath out of the middle of the country. And there's a man right there very concerned with what's about to happen as the big power hitting Yankee first baseman steps up. Now they getting some more junk off of the right field area. Al McRae helping clean it up. Chambliss is pacing back and forth. And Littell gets a couple of extra pitches to stay warm as they're throwing the debris off the field. There's the line score. We're in the bottom of the ninth inning. This game is for the American League Championship. I don't want to wear you out repeating it, but that's what it is. So consequently, the outcome has enormous meaning. What Kansas City has done in this series has been really exceptional when you stop to consider that one of their finest players the man who ordinarily ignites their offense and the man who is so fleet-footed and such a threat on the basis Amos Otis from the very first inning of the first game has been out you see uh, unthinking fans following bottles dangerous instrumentalities wonder again about the mentality of people who will stoop to such an act. Do it, Howard. Do it, Howard. Just telling it like it is. All right, now, the plate umpire, Art France, coming over to talk to Billy Martin. And uh, I'm sure that if it continues, we're going to have some admonishing words from the public address system about it. McCray was hit in the leg by an object thrown out there. Remember, Pete Rose was involved in the things not quite. Well, I remember this Pete Rose. Stadium. I remember Pete Rose at Jay Stadium. Yeah. Well, Here's the public it's... address announcer's warning. Please do not litter the field. Please do not throw bottles on the field. Throwing objects will endanger both the players and the spectators and the Yankees request good sportsmanship on the part of all. Thank you. It was cold that night and, and um, I was a first hitter and, and, and because of the cold and, and because of the moment, the fans understood the moment so they started throwing stuff on the field. They were throwing uh, toilet paper and stuff all, all over in the outfield. So before the first pitch was thrown, uh, even though I was ready and, and Mark Littell was ready to pitch, we had to wait because they had to pick up all the stuff in the outfield, all the ground crew. So that made it a little more anxious because it was, it was, it was, it was really cold and I was just sitting there shivering. Chris Chambliss walks to the plate. Chambliss, a sacrifice fly to left field for a run. Fielder's choice, a double and a single. 
Bird and Tengore are warm in the Kansas City bullpen. Chambliss is so hot he's got his shirt unbuttoned. He's in heat. Mark Littell delivers high drive. It's in right center field. That's gone. It is gone. Chris Chambliss has won the American League pennant for the New York Yankees. A thrilling, dramatic game with overtones of that great sixth game in the World Series a year ago and then the seventh game, too. What a way for the American League season to end. A spunky, young Kansas City team. Look at them, Bob Chris Chambliss. What a season he has had. What a series he has had. was no opportunity for Chris Shambliss to travel around the bases. He had to almost fight for his life to get to the clubhouse. He didn't touch home plate, but I'm sure it won't make any difference. It'll be an easy ruling on that one right there. It's a home run all the way. The stage was set for Mr. Chambliss. He set record after record. And it's a shame they don't have a most valuable player award for the playoffs. He hit that home run against a good, tough, young reliever whose whole record indicated how difficult it was to hit home runs off. Chambliss went up there with one purpose in mind, to hit the ball out of the ballpark. He achieved his second home run of the playoff series, his 11th hit of the playoff series, his eighth run batted in in the playoff series. A remarkable individual effort by the man from the University of California at Los Angeles. Well, you can see the melee on the field as they literally came pouring out of the stands. There was just no chance at controlling the crowd. And so the New York Yankees on Chris Chambliss' home run defeat the Kansas City Royals by the same score. The Cincinnati Reds won the National League Championship from the Philadelphia Phillies, seven to six. And you can see how many people have spilled out onto the field. Dick Tidrow will get the win in relief, and Mark Littell will take the loss. When he threw the first pitch, you know, I just swung at the first thing I saw. It was it was a high fastball, and I swung at it, and it wasn't a home run where where, where you kind of knew it was a home run because, it, it, as you know, it didn't go that far over the fence. But as soon as it went over the fence, it was just pandemonium. By the time I got to second, I saw nothing but people on the field. It was it was crazy, and and uh, it was kind of scary because the one thing that went through my mind was was that if I were to to fall down. I had I had all these people on, on top of me or something and, and I couldn't breathe. I, I, that's sort of what I what I thought about. The Yankee Clubhouse, the American League champion, New York Yankees, and the manager, Billy Martin. Billy, you did it. Tough series, a big home run by Chris Shambles in the ninth inning. Outstanding, Billy. The guys played great. You see how they played all year like that. They did it. I'm so proud of them. Billy, the series outstanding. Whitey Herzog and the Kansas City Royals. A lot of people uh, thought it wouldn't be this close, Billy. They took you five games, and it took that big home run by Shambliss to win it. I thought Whitey Herzog did a super job, and their players ought to be commended. They played great. It was just a great series. What about the ball game tonight, Billy? Anxious moments for you tonight? I know you're all keyed up, but I got to ask you. Well, the guys are up. I was, I was a little disappointed when we let that three runs get away from us, but they came back as usual. You know the thing, Billy, I noticed tonight, the introduction of the players on the field. You were standing, I haven't seen you do this in a long time. You were standing there clapping as each player was introduced on the field. Well, I, I kind of like my players. I love them. <laughs> Billy, outstanding job tonight, buddy. Congratulations. Billy Martin, the Yankee manager. Where's uh, where's Chris Shambliss? Get Chris Shambliss over here. We got to get Chris Shambliss. Where's Thurman Munson? Come here, Thurman. Outstanding series. Thurman Munson, the Yankee catcher. Big base hits tonight. Thurman, what about your feelings on the series? Uh, I'm not sure it's ended yet. I don't know if anybody gets to home play. We're just happy as hell to be here. You know, we blew a three-run lead there, and a guy hit a ball that really the wind took out. He didn't hit it real well right down the line. 
then, you know, we came back and Pedro came in and pitched well. And, you know, you can't fault Jackson. It was cold and the ball slipped. It just, it just feels good. The ball that, uh, that George Brett hit, Thurman, I know everybody wants to know. What was it? It was just uh, we were trying to pitch him away, just keep him in the ballpark. And he let a fastball slip. It was real slippery as it got cooler. And he came in, he wasn't loose, and he kind of threw the ball off. That's all. And, uh, it really wasn't hit well at all, like Mayberry's. You know, they, you know, they're both strong, and it happened. That's all. Thurman. What about uh, what about the home run by Shambles? What did you do when Chris Shambles hit the ball? Did you know it was gone? I was out in the field by home plate almost before the damn thing went over the fence. You know, Chris has done it all year. You know, like everybody, and there's really nobody you can pick out on this club that has done you know really a better job. And uh, just thank God, you know, the Lord was on our side, and uh, it's one of those things. Thurman, you had an outstanding series again. Congratulations. Now let's go back upstairs to Howard Cosell. Thank you very much, Bob. Thank you, Billy Martin. Thank you, Thurman Munson. Our congratulations to you. Billy Martin said one thing in that interview to remember. He said, we came back as usual. The whole trademark of this now championship Yankee team throughout the 1976 season has been its resiliency. Now we have Chris Chambliss ready in the clubhouse with Bob Uecker. Go ahead, Bob. The hero of tonight's ball game, Chris Chambliss, the game-winning home run in the ninth inning, and Chris, you had to go back and touch home plate. What happened? There's so many people around. I couldn't see any bases. I just, I don't know. I couldn't, I couldn't find home plate. They finally took me back out there and, and finally touched it. Did you tag them all? Did you tag them all, or do you know? I went over all of them, but it might have been some people land on them at the time, but. Uh, I think I touched all of them. Chris, an outstanding series. Uh, this got to be your greatest thrill ever. Ever in my life. Well, I tell you, it's really uh, been a great year for us. We've got a great ball club, and, and we really went to them. We had to just go after it ourselves, and because Kansas City is a tough ball club, and I'll tell you, it, it's all worth it. I'll tell you, it's, it's been fantastic. I got to ask you, did you get down a little bit? Uh, the three-run homer by George Brett. I was down a little bit, but uh, geez, it only tied the game. You know, we had a good lead, and it didn't put them ahead, and, and I think that made us feel good. Grant went out and got the rest of those guys out, and that was very important, and it kept the tie. And I, you know, just because it tied the game, it didn't didn't hurt us at all. Chris, an outstanding series, uh, an outstanding ball game tonight, buddy. All right, thank you very much, Bob. But right there, a study in contrast. The exultation, the jubilation of the Yankee clubhouse, and there, the utter disappointment, despair, the disbelief of the Kansas City clubhouse. But there you go, there's the scene. One body after another, the fingers raised. We're number one, we're number one. So the Yankees have become number one. Our congratulations to George Steinbrenner, Gabe Paul, to manager Billy Martin. To the New York Yankees. Looking back on it, it was um, the highlight of my